Pokemon. Yeah, you know what time it is. That's right, I got one ready. I believe we're live. Hello, I'm Eagle, Eagle Gardens, Eagle Gardens 1 on Instagram. You are watching Talking Shit with Eagle. Tonight's guest is Scott from Myers Now. So glad to get him on the show tonight and so he can tell us about his wonderful products and talk shit with us and tell us a little bit about the man behind the product. I hope you all enjoy. So, uh, all right, we already got one in chat. Welcome, CJ. And he's CJ's one of our loyal viewers. I like to call them out as they pop up, too. I like to uh, make everybody feel like they're part of the show as well. So if I stop you to say hello, I hope uh, it doesn't bother you too bad. But uh, it's just part of it, I guess. Um, welcome, Scott. You want to tell everybody uh, who you are and where they can find you and a little bit about yourself to get going? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, first, let me just say thanks for letting me on, Eagle, and uh, giving an opportunity to share our fellow growers uh, with the information of the dryer I had custom made for us. Um, really appreciate that, bro. I'm here in Michigan, uh, just like yourself, and I've been a grower for a while, ever since we uh, went uh, medical. And I quickly realized that uh, we needed a better, more consistent method of drying. And I took the last five years to do uh, multiple tests on different uh, environments and different seasonal change. And uh, I come up with a really nice dryer for us. Uh, you know, I put a heavy duty motor in it. I made custom trays and uh, growers are very, very happy Eagle. And you've been a big part of that. I just want to say that again, you jumped on board early and uh, you've been a big part of helping other growers uh, you know, with the dry and having uh, consistent and better results. I really want to thank you, bro. Am I coming in? I think I lost your, uh, can't hear you. Oh, I had myself muted. Sorry about that. I absolutely love my machine. I have uh, thank you for uh, letting me to get on board bright and early. I mean, that my machine go has gone and gone and gone. I don't think it ever shuts off, to be honest with you. I load, unload them trays and uh, pack it full of something right behind it. It's uh, It's been a great product. I can't wait to see what's uh, coming from you guys. Oh, yeah. Uh, this was just the beginning. Right now, we're going to keep improving, making little improvements on it. I'm reinvesting into the product, you know, with uh, with money that I've earned, you know, and profits. Uh, talking to the all the different growers out there allows me to get really good feedback on um, how to make changes and what to do in the future. Um, one of the things in the future is we are going to be uh, having a larger dryer. And another thing in the future is we're going to have a European model here this year later on this year we're going to come out with the european version um as you know a lot of countries uh have different voltages here uh, out there than the united states and canada um like uk france germany australia they all have different voltages so we had a lot of problems i was sending those dry i was sending herbs now to those countries in the very beginning but too many dryers were getting blown up and uh we just had to stop and i wanted growers to have a good experience you know I didn't want them to get my dryer and then it fucking blows up on them and you know that's no good so um, we're, we're on the rebound with the European countries and we're gonna we're gonna start sending them out again this year and um, we're going strong Eagle we're really going strong there's lots of growers every day switching over to a to an herbs now dryer um, they're really seeing the uh, you know the value of consistent drying you know safer end results safer jar time um, they're retaining more terpenes, they're retaining more THC, and uh, it, it's going really good, really good, Eagle. I'm, I'm, like I said, I'm happy. If it wasn't going good, we wouldn't be on your show here, and we wouldn't be talking shit. <laughs> right. right on. Um, yeah, I see them more and more. I see them uh, 
heads or people popping up that they're finally made that switch and uh, couldn't be more prouder to see it. Uh, especially for the home grower, it's something perfect that, you know, it helps. I've, I've been meaning to uh, try some bubble hash, trying my, some bubble hash in there myself. How's that going? Did you try it yet doing the bubble hash? I haven't, but uh, it's next up on the next wash. I'm going to throw some, a layer in there under some, uh, on top of some parchment paper and see how well that works out for me. So let's back up here before we start talking product. Let's, uh, you, did you bring something? Obviously, you, you showed me a little bit of something you had to uh, partake on. I got a shot of dryer here, the Gorilla Glue. Nice, nice. Got to have something to touch on while we're talking here. Uh, I'm rolling up a insane in the membrane with a little bit of bubble hash again. <laughs> I think this is like my uh, fourth night. I made a nice uh, run of some bubble hash tonight. It's the dry sift. Oh, yeah. Run. But, uh, yeah. So, uh, that sounds, I love them containers, by the way. Thank I got you. mine right here. Thank <laughs> you. Get, uh, real quick about the container. So on the bottom here, on the bottom of the lid, that hole, that little hole there, you can take a piece of cotton. Mm -hmm. Okay. The steel better with a little piece of cotton inside that hole. Just wanted to show Did you. Did you repeat that? Because you kind of cut out there for a sec. What was that? I cut out? Yeah. I was trying to show you. I put a little piece of cotton inside the hole there for the vacuum. And that'll filter small particles that might uh, cause the one way valve to not hold a seal well. So. Okay. I'll have to uh, do that. I, I, that's, I'm showing you, I want you to do that. Okay. I will do that. Nice. So, uh, who, who else we got in the chat right here, uh, right quick while we got to pause? We got Abolish Farms, Jimmy Craig Seeds, Trey. Nice to uh, have you guys in here. Welcome. We're getting ready to fire up, so uh, if you got something rolled up, please uh, smoke along with us as we get this uh, chat to roll on. All right, Scott, let's uh, wind up before products and uh, tell me a little bit about yourself, uh, what get, got you to your canvas journey, and what got you to uh, the necessity that you needed to get that dryer, that lovely dryer out to us. Oh, yeah, absolutely, Eagle. Uh, well, I have a background in laboratory environmental testing. I used to run a laboratory for about 10 years. Um, so I know the value of consistent, accurate results. Um, I know the value of a good instrument. Um, and when I got into, oh, and I also have an electronics background um, that, that allowed me to uh, well, it allowed me to help build this dryer, you know, and understanding, you know, different, you know, circuits and, you know, all kinds of stuff like that, components that go into, uh, you know, a product like this. Um, so I started growing when we, uh, from Michigan here, went medical. And, you know, like everyone else, Eagle, when you first don't know, you know, nothing. I mean, I, I grew before. I had a garden growing up all the time. I grew trees. So I had a good handle on nutrients and, you know, pH and, you know, the basics. Um, so when I started uh, growing, <clears throat> growing cannabis and uh, looking at all the different methods out there and everybody's doing this and that and uh, taking it all in, um, when, I when it came time to chop the plants down, and start doing the hang dry, you know, I, I read up, you know, everybody hang dry, sure, well, let's hang them up, hang them up. And, uh, you know, after about my third or fourth crop, the, the results I was getting just wasn't good. And being a first time grower, um, I had a lot of uh, money invested into, you know, lights, you know, all kinds of stuff to get your grow going, you know, you can easily drop a couple grand. Um, 
So I wanted my return. I, I couldn't afford to really lose money or lose anything uh, with buds or anything like that. And getting jars with hay smell in them, you know, that was just a big bummer. So I quickly realized, hey, this method is very inconsistent. Um, despite what the experts are saying, despite what, you know, all these people are saying what to do, it's just the same regurgitated information out there. There's got to be a better way. There's got to be a better way to get better results um, more consistently. And I started looking at different methods and somebody in one of these rooms said, you can't use a, a, a food maker. And I said, well, why not to myself? And I went and looked at it and they were running hot. Yeah, they said they run hot, 95 degrees, whatever. So I took one apart. I ripped that son of a bitch apart, Eagle. Looked at the guts of that thing and I lowered the temperature. I put a different, you know, and I don't recommend anyone else doing this. If you don't know electronics, if you don't know about resistors, if you don't know about capacitors, if you don't know what a, a diode is, if you don't know what a transistor is, if you don't know anything about that kind of stuff, don't be fucking around with it because you could burn your house down. You could burn your grow down. You could, a lot of things can go wrong. So, you know, I was able to, uh, work my way through it. And once I dialed it in, I started from the ground zero Eagle. I started with a low, the lowest temperature you could go 60 degrees. And I worked my way up. It basically was just a fan running and, uh, those low temperatures Eagle, they don't work. Um, buds, they take too long to, to dry moisture lingers. We start to get hay smell. Um, that lingering moisture allows the mold opportunity to grow, um, there's just a lot of issues with it. So after I dialed it in and uh, had the temperature that I, I liked, I started, you know, saying, hey, is this good? You like it? Oh, yeah, this is great. And I would use my friends. I'd say, hey, come on, check it out. Let's uh, let's roll one up. Let's and I'd let them smell the jars. And which one do you like? And, you know, they'd pick the the, the jar that came through the bud dryer every time because it smelled stronger and the weed looked better. And, and I just, you know, Eagle, one day I just said, you know what? Growers need a tool. We need a tool like this. So I gathered up everything I could. I gathered all my information. I found a manufacturer. I talked to several engineers and I got this uh, product to us after several tests. I had, there's more than one prototype. Uh, believe me, this did not come right out of the gate. There was like three prototypes we did with temperature testing, trays, all kinds of stuff. You know, this was a long project. And uh, yeah, so with all that knowledge and, and testing I put into it, um, I, I can assure you, all the fellow growers out there, I can assure you, if you're having issues with your drying, if it's not consistent, if you don't have the room, if you just think it could be better, my dryer will put you in the bullseye rings every harvest, every harvest. Oh, I've never had anybody complain about uh, my dry bud yet. No. In fact, I would say 90% or better don't even know it's been in a dryer until I've told them. And they can't believe it. They, when I tell them, you know, this came out of a dryer, this has been wet four days ago this is wet four days ago and now we're smoking they can't believe it you know it's yeah. incredible you no know, it, it's incredible unless there's a lot of eagle there's a lot of skeptics out there there's a lot of non-believers they they think you need to do this long extended dry when in fact that long extended dry is actually hurting our buds um it's allowing a oxidation to take place um it's allowing mold to grab a hold. There's all kinds of factors in play here. Um, many growers don't realize just how hard um, it is to drive moisture off of our buds, to drive that water off. Um, it takes a lot of energy, you know, it takes a lot of energy. And uh, if it's not coming off at a nice consistent rate, if your water activity is not dropping at a nice consistent rate, this guarantees mold to grow, okay? Most people don't even see it on their buds because it's, it's not a big fluffy rabbit tail. Um, it's microscopic and uh, yeah, it's hard to spot. So you wanna be careful. We wanna, we wanna, as growers, we wanna have a safe dry down every harvest. We want a safe, consistent dry down every harvest. Once our buds are safely dried and jarred up, 
you can do whatever you want after, you know, after that, if you want to reintroduce moisture, if you want to just let them sit there in your jar, you know, if you want to smoke them, whatever you want to do, you can do. But first, we want a nice, consistent dry down. And that doesn't happen until the stem is breaking. We got to wait for that stem to break. So is there any tricks uh, to using the dryer that you want to pass along to anybody? I got a couple I use myself. But I want to hear some from the master if there's, you know, I've heard you many a time say you could just let her roll. Yeah. You know, with, there's a, I'm sorry, go ahead. There's uh, you know, I wouldn't say there's too many tricks. I would say the biggest thing to be aware of is the dryer is not going to over dry. Most, how can I say this? Everybody out there right now that wants to use the dryer is getting ready to use the dryer, or wants to try the dryer or the first time user, they've been hand drying this whole time. So their experience with a dried bud um, from what they've been doing to what they're about to switch over to with the herbs now is night and day. The level of dryness that they are going to be able to achieve with the herbs now is very hard to achieve with a slow, low temperature, high humidity hang drying. So first time growers, um, a lot of them get excited or get make the common mistake of early, they'll prematurely stop their drying, okay? Prematurely stop drying, they'll feel the outside of the bud you know, they'll feel it and they'll say, Ooh, it's crispy. Ooh, it feels dry. No, no, no. You can't do that with this method. Um, you must go by the stem. You have to keep drying until that stem breaks because once that happens, um, Eagle, this is what I tell them. Once the stems are breaking, this is what ensures safe jar time and maximum control over the moisture returning to your buds. Okay. We, we're not trying to keep the moisture that's in the bud there. Okay, we want to get that moisture out down to a level safely and consistently till that stem breaks, then allow new moisture to come in contact with the bud for the first time. This is what gives us the control. This is what gives us the safe jar time. So for those of the growers out there that like a nice uh, the, a spongier bud, you know, or a more wet bud, you can achieve this, okay? Just because you the dryer you know, uh, it feels dry to you and you want to stop, don't stop. We want to get the moisture down to a level to that stem breaks, then in the jar, then you can rehydrate your bud to a spongy level or to however level you want safely and slowly over what? Did you cure for 30 days? Do you cure for 60 days? Okay, you got 60 days to slowly bring that moisture back. You know, that's weeks of time. So this is what you know, this is what safe drying is all about. You know, we don't want to uh, under dry your bud. You don't want to under dry your bud to where you still have a lot of moisture in the stem. You're going to jar that up. You think you're going to burp that out. Okay. But you're not going to burp that out. It's going to take too long to burp it out. It's going to be too inaccurate to burp it out. And you're going to end up with problems trying to burp it out. So if you're put buds in your jar that are still moist enough to where you feel you have to burp them, you shouldn't have jarred those buds. You shouldn't be jarring any buds that have enough moisture in them to where you, you, you have to burp them because that's just a recipe for disaster there, Eagle. I've seen lots of growers tell me messages and show me pictures already that the buds just get ruined. So you gotta be careful. Well, I can definitely see that with a new grower. Uh... I know when I first started with the curing kind of process, there'd be times where I did think it was dry and or and or forgot for a day after thinking it was somewhat dry that uh -huh. uh, I went back and it was super moist again. And I was like, oh, God, right. It, you know, it happens. It happens to the best of us. We get busy and whatnot. Um, now, what? What would you say to somebody uh, that has a super, super humid environment uh, and it goes past the 96? Have you ever had anybody go past the 96 hours? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, all the time. There's growers in Florida. Shout out to Genetics. There's, there's growers in Hawaii. I got growers in Georgia. Um, high humidity climates. 100 and you know 24 144 hours i just <laughs> <coughs> it's 30, 
zoomed in from the top on my page, uh, the grower went 108 hours. The secret, okay, um, what I was kind of getting to when you start talk, I start you start talking, I you know get off on a tangent. What I was getting to um, is whether you're in an extremely dry environment or whether you're in an extremely humid environment. The trick is to keep drying until your stem breaks. Okay, that's the trick right there. Whether you're in a dry environment or a humid environment, once that stem starts breaking, end results are the same, okay? End results are the same. The guys that are drying a little longer in the humid environment, their buds aren't coming out any better. And the guys that are drying a little quicker because they're in a, they're in a, a low humidity environment, their buds aren't coming out any shittier, okay? I've done multiple, dozens and dozens of tests um, through the dry versus the, um, the high humidity. End results are exactly the same as long as you're waiting for that stem to break. The dryer can't over dry. Now, when I what I say when I what I mean when I'm saying that is, uh, if you have a small popcorn size nug uh, bud, a small popcorn and a large uh, size bud in this dryer at the same time, the popcorn buds usually dry up about 72 hours, 72 to 75. They're ready to be smoked or jarred. Any larger bud. They take longer, you know, they always take longer. They're always in the 80s, mid 80s, 96 plus hours, depending on your humidity. Regardless, if you left the small buds in there to keep drying and wait until the big buds catch up to them, end result's the same. The little bud, the little popcorn bud didn't get any drier than the big one at the end. Uh, why is that? Because the dryer cannot get to the next level of heat. The dryer cannot raise the heat high enough to dry things out fast enough or over dry them, okay? The big concern is under drying here. You don't wanna stop drying um, before them stems break. I've had growers tell me, oh, it started to dry at 24 hours. I stopped drying. I said, wait a minute, 24 hours? I says, that wasn't my dryer you were using because nothing in my dryer dries at 24 hours. I said, show me a picture. What are your stems doing? They send me a picture, they send me a video, them stems are bending, the bud is spongy as hell. I says, you gotta put those back in the dryer. I says, you, you have not finished the drying process, okay? You're not done. You got way too much moisture in those buds. You don't wanna jar up right now. And uh, yeah, so it's just, you know, getting used to, it's like using a drill or a saw, you know? Um, as, as long as you keep pushing down on that drill bit in the drill, the hole's gonna keep getting deeper. You know, you, you know when to pull back, you know when to let go of the trigger, you know when to, you know, cut the wood. It's just a matter of, it's just like any other tool, Eagle. And uh, a lot of growers, they're catching on to it real quick, Eagle, real quick. Well, I agree. It's a wonderful tool. And I just think uh, for those that are sour on it, I just, like you just said, I, I say you have to play with it in your environment a little bit and uh, get to know it, just like you're saying. There's some little tricks to it here and there to adjust it to your situation. Uh, but I love my machine. I, I know, and I go against a lot of what you had to say to how to use it. You know, I use it to uh, my method, but it, it works well. I like to, I'm, in my dries, I'll, I'll let it dry for an uh, <clears throat> un unannounced time, whatever it tells me, until it gets nice and crispy, like you're saying, a good crisp. And to where where these people would probably be saying, oh, it's too dry, it's too dry. At that point, I like to shut the machine off for a few hours and kind of let it all wick out and then uh, fire the machine back up and uh, let it go its course again until it uh, reaches that nice and crisp level, fire it down for a few hours and then uh, let that moisture wick out one more time and then fire it up <clears throat> again until a Christmas. And then after that point, uh, I feel it's dry. Then I put it in a jar after that point. Oh, Any yeah, uh, objections to that method? Yeah, that sounds like a perfect, you're, you're monitoring it more, you're watching it. There's a little bit more babysitting, but there's nothing wrong with what you're doing, Eagle. You can absolutely do that. It's when they prematurely stop drying. Um, a lot of first time users around the 50 to 55 hour mark, right around the halfway point, um, they'll feel the outside of that bud, they start to panic, they jar everything up, they shut the machine off, and then they'll send me a message in about two or three days saying that their buds smell like hay, and I tell them what happened. 
And they said, well, it was about 48 hours. The buds felt dry and I shut everything off. I jarred it up. I thought it was done. And now it smells like hay. Well, there was still too much moisture in there. That's why it smells like hay. A lot of these guys, they don't want to wait. Or they'll call me up and they'll say whatever. And I'll say, put it back in the dryer. They put it in the dryer. They finish up. Oh, it smells good now. It went away. We're all good. Excellent. Um, it's just a common mistake of not getting used to it. We've been beat. We've been beat over the head for decades about this slow and low. And everybody's scared. They're scared out of their pants about moisture and not having it leave the bud. Everybody's panicked. And moisture is our enemy. We don't want it to linger. Okay. We want it to go away at a nice consistent pace we want our buds dry and that is what gives us the control whether we want to bring moisture back to your bud at that point or whether you just want to safely keep it in a jar keeping the moisture away that is you know that is the choices that we have now you know there's no more guessing games and ruining our buds in jars if there's too much moisture or if we didn't dry it enough or you know everybody's pointing the finger Oh, you got a hang dry. You got a hang dry. Oh, I hang dry, but my bud smelled like hay. Well, you did it wrong. You didn't have enough moisture. You didn't have enough fan. You didn't have air conditioning running. You weren't 60-60. It's always the grower's fault when something goes wrong, when these, uh, these hang dry methods work out. But let me tell you, Eagle, I'm the first one to tell you, it's not you. We got some smart growers out there. We got some guys that listen, follow directions. It ain't the growers. It's the method. The method. The method is inconsistent and risky, and all that's changing right here, my man. And you were on board. You were on board right from the beginning just about, bro. I can't believe it. I'm so happy. Eagle, I remember the first day when Sauer put me out, you know, he reached out, said, check out Eagle, and, you know, kind of started getting, you know, to know each other. And I was nervous, bro. I was nervous. When you got the dryer. <laughs> that's you got funny. I loved it. I loved it. I was more than happy. Sour Harvest Gardens put us together. That was all completely awesome of him. You know, he's a great dude. He's helped me out more than one way. Shout out to him. And uh, no, I've been completely happy with it. I mean, I was a little skeptical at first, just like everybody else, but it didn't take long for me to, you know, go, hey, you know, fuck this. I don't. Why? Why for the same space I was I had a four by tent four by four tent that I used it, I was hanging in, and why hanging that can now grow in that same area and then dry my my smoke in this dryer in a sixteen by sixteen area you know There's, it's just exactly what you just did they've they've now taken advantage of the space that they were using to dry now it's a area to grow in. It's huge. This is just, it's an awesome thing. Eagle, you've seen me from the beginning. We were growing every day. We're growing. Um, every day I get excellent messages, happy growers telling me that this was the final piece of the puzzle. Um, they had their growing perfect, but it was just the drying that they had trouble with. And now the dryer, uh, the herbs now get some right in the bullseye rings and they can stop wherever you want. Like I tell everybody, it's like steak. You can have it pink or you can have it, you know, a little bit more well done or however you like it, medium. You can have all that. But with the dryer, first we got to have a consistent dry down. Then you then you figure out where more moisture level you like. Then you figure out how you want your buds. We want to do it safe. And the only way to do it safe is to have a consistent dry. That's the only way. Now, uh, another thing I like to do when I'm using my dryer is because I'm in my room quite a bit and I'm out here and I do monitor things just like I would have a, a hang dry because there's a lot of risks in the hang dry too, especially if you're drying in a tent and you zip that bad boy up, you get a moisture spike and uh, you're in just as much trouble with that method. So I am monitoring things all the time and I like to uh, rotate to juggle the trays. If one's feeling a little more drier than the rest, I just simply, you know, restack the trays and put the lid back on and let her go for a few little bit longer. So that's another thing that I found it helps and it just evens out the dryer a little bit more. And the next question I have for you is, uh, I notice uh, when I've seen you tell people to stack it, you uh, you tell them to leave more bud or uh, more stem in there than I ever do. And uh, you seem to tell them to uh, pack it a little more loosely than I do. I actually have, I, I'm going to grab my, I'm going to 
let you talk because I can still hear you, but I'm going to step off camera here and uh, grab my machine and show you how densely I pack mine and uh, see what you think about that. Absolutely. So uh, go ahead and... Uh, well, my consensus on the whole thing is this. For maximum capacity um, of filling the Herbs Now dryer, for maximum capacity, we want to stand the buds up like Christmas trees. So you stand them up side by side, right next to each other, leaving no room. You want them in there nice and snug. And uh, that is how you get the maximum capacity. We take advantage of the head space by standing the bud up so you can put a little bit longer of a bud in there. And um, I try to, I don't try to put that much stem in there, Eagle. Um, I try to keep as little stem as possible. And I try to keep a nice uh, finished manicured look on the bud when it goes in. So that way when it's dried, I can just jar it up and there's no second trim or anything like that. And I've seen your buds, Eagle, and I've seen the way you load the trays. You do a beautiful job. You pack them trays. Your buds look awesome. So I have no issues. You, you're, you're a professional loader. You did a great job. See, Even I am. That's, that's what I'm saying is, you know, um, as you can see, these the, these things, I, I have no problem with the buds being slightly pinched for one. Uh, for two, I believe, you know, you got them big old honker buds. You, nobody wants to pay for that big old stem or nobody wants a bag of that big old stem anyway. So I, you know, I make that large cola as small as possible, and, you know. But as you can see, let me see, there you go. I do pack that thing just as dense as could be. This is uh, some... Pine Valleys, by the way. She's been in there for, uh, well, we got 20 hours left. That's been in for 20 and hours? You could, oh, yeah, you got it. Pack yeah. It. Don't drop it. Yeah. I, I'd pack that thing as, you know, I'll even stack them. If there's a hole, I'll even pack a little butt up in there and, you know. <laughs> Keep letting the bud go out here, Eagle. Talking too much. Well, I think I lost your sound. Oh, my, my mic was off. But uh, yeah, you can see I pack this thing like crazy and uh, I never have a problem with this. You know, it's, I love this machine, for real. That's, that's right. I, uh, I want to repeat myself because I, I think my mic was off that whole time, but I don't, uh, I don't put giant buds in there. I'll cut them down to the smallest they can and tell they're about, you know, if this bud's, you know, huge, I'll cut the cut that stick right out and, you know, make buds like this and pack it as dense as possible. But uh, this thing, I can easily pack, you know, eight to 10 ounces of some nice dense bud in this thing, you know, easily. How much did you think you put in there? You got over eight ounces in there, huh, buddy? Oh, for sure, for sure. There's way more, yeah. It's, yeah, no problem. <laughs> Those are nice rock art buds. So, you said yeah. you had seven point eight ounces. I think you said you put it in the one time, and that was with five trays. Five trays. You said you put seven point eight ounces. No problem. Nice dense buds, and you know, stacked in there, nice tight like that. Not a problem. You know, that thing's been a save lifesaver for me too. There's been times where. Uh, patients have uh, came up and just you know they needed their meds and that thing has delivered them almost on time every time so patients thank they you shit to you or nothing give me that fuck that didn't work and the patients always liked it yeah that's awesome that's awesome every time i've had people on the panel uh smoke this i've had people at events smoke that thing i mean like the night before it came out of the dryer. It was off the plant four days prior, out of the dryer the night before. And they were like, oh, this is super turpy. This is super delicious. What is this? And I'd be like, can you believe that was on the plant four days ago? You know? So it's definitely a nice machine. You know, I, I tell the skeptics that, you know, our naysayers. I'm like, you're probably lighting your house still with candles and afraid to try new things, aren't you? 
<laughs> things get better and just because one thing got a rap one time doesn't mean you know that thing's set in stone so give it a whirl i like to relate it uh to like the horse and buggy you know some some of the haters they'd be like we've been hang grind for two thousand years you know and there's that's the best way well, you know what? You know, we've been riding a horse for a long time, too, you know, but you don't see other many people running around on a horse, do you? Um, I love a horse. They're a beautiful animal. But, you know, things change. Things get better. And, uh, you know, we move on. You know, I'm all about if hey, if hang drying was that good, if it was that great, um, we wouldn't be talking right now because I'd be hang drying like everybody else and uh, getting good results. But I, I didn't get good results. And it wasn't because of me. Okay, it wasn't because I didn't know any hang drug, you know, it ain't about that. No, it just the method wasn't good. And I moved on and I developed a dryer, a tool for our grow room. And we're bringing it home. <laughs> we're bringing it home. This is crazy. I'm actually going to be able to provide you a side by side here in a few days because I harvested, uh, just harvested a monster Pine Valleys from GMX OG Ocean Grown Seeds. And uh, that thing was a monster. And it actually overfilled the machine. I've got three hangers over here. Uh, so I've got buds on hangers over here, and I have a machine packed. So I will be able to do a side-by-side, -side, you know, uh, hang dry versus machine dry taste test here in a few days of a brand new strain. I, it's a strain I haven't even had yet. So I should be able to easily, you know, pronounce the difference so i'm looking kind of looking forward to that we were talking about the machine last night on the show with uh jack me and greg jack's green stocks we're talking about your machine really? because he's they've had you on the uh the cheap home grow show yeah i think you might remember jack from that show so we were talking a little bit about the machine and uh some other stuff you might want to go back and uh, check that out I just, you know, we, we, we need better options. And, you know, I just got, uh, I got tired of uh, bad results. That's why I did this. I, I want safer drying for all of us. I want everyone to get higher. That's right. We're getting higher. <laughs> right on. I just want to say real quick hi to uh, some people that's popped in, Tara, Jill, uh who else we got here nutrient shout outs drop drop shot one U uk uh sorry uksf1420 sorry if i've missed anybody else if you have anybody has any questions feel free to post them up in chat and uh feel free to read them off to scott here you know i actually got uh, a dm from a uk viewer uh today he said he had uh some copyright issues with the the show but he's been watching along and i was like no shit uk that's awesome really? yeah here we go he just woke up 510 i don't believe this is the one i talked to this morning but this is you know god what a what a small world the internet makes it to be so yeah this is a uh, i love this i love the opportunity that these people have the uh, opportunity to ask questions and uh, smoke along with us as we're doing this a lot different than a uh, aspect of just doing the one-on-one -on -one ad interview when you've got people you can uh, converse with as you talk to and they can uh, propose questions that we're not thinking of so again if anybody in chat has any questions about the machine and or oh. whatnot feel free to shoot them up so anything else let's uh yeah keep going is there anything else you want to talk about the machine or uh uh you know just guys that you know if you're thinking about it um if you're curious if you're having issues with drying if you're having inconsistent results space issues jump on board don't hesitate don't hesitate this is multiple advantages um to using the herbs now dryer multiple advantages not just the safe, uh, safe drying and the space saving and the time. Those are all wonderful benefits. Um, ramping up your pro productivity. If you got a uh, 
perpetual harvest. If you're harvesting a plant every couple of weeks, this is an essential tool. This keeps you in the game every time because you don't have to be guessing on your drying anymore. Um, we want control, guys. We want control. I put a lot of time into this dryer, a lot of testing, um, tested all the temperature, you know, different temperature ranges. The temperature range that the dryer is set at is an excellent, excellent temperature range for high humidity, for low humidity. Um, it's not going to over dry. And it's not going to under dry. Okay. We're going to be right in the Goldilocks zone, what I like to call it. And uh, that's what it's all about. We are, we have helped. I have helped with the dryer. So many growers right now, Eagle. And I know, I know you understand this because you, you got the dryer and uh, yeah, we're helping tons. Okay. Of We've got a couple questions already here going. I know the answers to both, but I want to get an answer. One of them you've already briefly kind of touched on is uh, Eve wants to know when it'll be available in Europe again. Okay. And Jimmy Crack Seeds wants to know, does it come in one size? And I know that answer for now, and I want to hear what you got to say about that. And go ahead and tell them if there's any deals going you know what I mean? Uh, okay. On the what you have going now. So, okay. First question uh, the European model. It's right now, it's being worked on. I'm going to be testing it here shortly. It'll be ready this summer. Um, the European model will be able to handle the different voltage levels in the UK, France, Germany, Australia. Um, all those different countries that have little bit slightly different voltage levels, uh, the, the, the herbs now European will be able to handle that. Um, so you won't have to fear plugging it in or getting a step down transform or anything like that and anything something blowing up. Um, so that'll be ready. It's going to be the same price and we're going to have, we're going to be probably working with a, uh, a grow store in each one of the countries to help save on duty fees. Um, because right now, uh, that's what we're going to do. We're doing with Canada. Shout out to the Tree of Life in Ontario, Canada. Um, they're taking all the herbs now orders right now. And this helps save on the duty fees because we'll send the dryers right to this grow store. And then this, the customer can just go to the grow store and buy it or the grow store itself will send the herbs now to the customer without duty fees once it's our country. So um, we're going to do that with the other Basically stores. sub. <clears throat> go ahead. Basically, but for the for the other question, um, we have the uh, what size? Right now, it only comes in one size, um, but the trays are adjustable. So if you didn't, if you had a small amount or just a test sample, um, you can just use one tray or two trays. Um, I recommend going eight trays high. After eight trays, if you started to put say 10 trays on or 12 trays high, um, they would have to, you would have to do what you just earlier suggested where you take the trays and you start rotating them, um, you know, top half with the bottom half and stuff like that. Um, so yes, you would have to rotate it if you went beyond eight, but with the eight trays, um, when configured, if you take the eight trays and make four, four big bud spacer trays, which is two trays turned into one to, by taking the uh, bottom out of the top tray. Um, with that configuration, you can get up to a pound. That's right, one pound in the dryer. Um, one big bud spacer tray can hold up to four ounces dry. With four of those, that's 16 ounces. So with a little bit of practice and uh, you know, getting familiar with the dryer, um, you can easily, you can get up to a pound in the dryer. So one that's dryer. Nice. That's a pretty good deal. Now, is uh, you have the options of the five and eight tray units, and uh, is there any deals on? I believe you had the what was it, the play a pack or something like that, right? Uh, the yeah. Baller, the baller box, right? Some, I didn't hear that. Smaller what? It was the baller box or something like that. The two dryer deal. Oh, yes. We have packages, the package deals. Now, among the, the deal that is in your bio, the Eagle Gardens One link, um, the free shipping link that you have in your bio, um, we offer a package deal on, <clears throat> we call it the Grower Plus package, which is two dryers, and it's a savings of $45. 
And then we have a gangster package, which is three dryers, and that's a savings of $90. Um, I also offer a veteran discount. If you're a veteran and you can show me proof of uh, veteran status, either via dog tags or paperwork or pictures, um, I can invoice you a special price for your dryer if you're a veteran. Um, that is not on the website. You would have to contact me through email or through the Instagram or Facebook, you know, any one of the social medias, and I would give you the dryer discount for a veteran. That's awesome. That's awesome. We have right now. Um, So you said the bigger unit might be available this summer. Oh, we're gonna have a, we're gonna have an upgrade later on this summer. Uh, but the bigger unit is still about a year away. I got a team. That's right. I said a team of engineers working on the herbs now. I don't know what we're gonna call it. Um, maybe you can give a little input on that. Herbs now professional, or herbs now pro or herbs now, you know, uh, you know, something larger, you know, you know, a word that represents larger herbs now extreme, you know, I don't know, uh, but that's still herbs not now harvester. Right. Yeah. That's a good one. Right. I didn't even think of something like that. I think that's great. And, uh, but we don't have the name anything down, but yeah, I, you know, I'm open for suggestions. I'm going to take suggestions and see what, uh, see what growers have to say about, you know, a larger, uh, herbs now and what the name could be nice hell yeah yeah so yeah we are working uh, on and, yeah uh, you you're a hustler that's for sure you brought this thing a long way in this past year i mean hats off to you man i respect people that uh, have a vision and aren't afraid to just do what the hell they have to do to uh to get it out there and that's been you this past year I think when uh, you did, we, we met up, uh, you had what? I think it was like 1,200 followers on Instagram or something like that. I mean, you just barely had your foot out there. And I was looking at your account today, and I was like, holy cow, 15,000, man. He's really done some hustling. Yeah, yeah, that's awesome. That's yeah. fucking awesome, man. Oh, we so can... hats off to you, brother. Yeah, yeah, we've been killing it. it it's been going great. Eagle, I'm telling you, um, I didn't get into this to fuck around, okay? I didn't get into this to people's chains or blow smoke up people's asses. Um, what a lot of people don't realize mm. is the first time um, I have shown, a fellow grower has shown for the first time with laboratory results, we can have better results. We can have we can retain more terpenes and we can retain more THC. Now, I don't know about you, but to me, that's huge because that means we're going to get higher. That means the buds are going to smell more. Okay. Uh, I don't, I don't grow weed because I like the way it tastes. I don't, <laughs> you know, that's just the second. I, I love the way weed tastes. Man. I, well, let's say you quit saying weed. We got to quit saying weed. We got to love the way cannabis tastes. I love it. Uh, taste. But, but I like the way it gets me high. That's the number one thing. I don't know. I, I argue that uh, the taste and the, uh, the terps are in themselves yeah. uh, medical, therapeutical themselves, you know. They, you know, they relax all themselves, just like the, the Chinese forest bass, you know, getting that pinene on you. It's, and it's the same thing when you intake it. It's very, very relaxing. Get high if you so, like the taste or the flavor, it's all good, Eagle. It is. I'd like to welcome uh, Red Setter Farms to the show tonight. Me and Red had a great, great episode the other night. If uh, you didn't have a chance to watch that, me and him had like a marathon episode. It was like three and hours and ten minutes of just solid, great combo. Red's got some great info, and uh, he actually, when you uh, asked me. Uh, not so long ago about a test unit for a larger machine. Uh, Red was the one that I suggested. So if, you, if you're looking for a tester when that bad boy is ready, I would suggest uh, Red Setter Farms there. But uh, he's a great guy. And I hope uh, one of these days when we're able to socially get out there again and uh, 
go to a cup that we can all get out there and uh, meet each other. So, yeah. Missed you with that one cup, too. I almost went. Detroit, that was a good cup. That was a good cup. That was uh, the whole team of uh, Michigan Bros Grow Show. I want to shout that out. That's a Sunday live show, and they've got their own uh, tons of tons of great content going on over there. But uh, we had the whole panel there in Detroit, and that was a great cup. It was uh, such a surreal setting. It was spooky, you know. It was Detroit. It just uh, it was weird. It was weird, but it was a great time. So uh, maybe uh, this year sometime we can uh, hook up and uh, smoke down and have some fun. So besides the machine, when you're not hustling and probably getting about two hours sleep, <laughs> when you get a break, uh, what's Scott doing in his spare time? What did you, you know, what do you do when you're not hustling? We'll talk Let's take about a break and talk life for a second here, brother. What's that? So let's take a break and talk a little life here. What are you doing when uh, you breathe? I know it's hard. It sounds like you don't ever get a breath. Eagle, let me, let me give you a little peek into my world. Usually, you know, you just said it just a few minutes ago. You, you seen when I had a little bit of followers. Now it's like, you know, I broke 15K. I wake up in the morning. I check my messages. Um, I go straight into the, the warehouse. I start checking dryers, making sure everything's good, packing things up. I check more messages. Um, I get home. Um, I send emails out. I take care of my bro. I know you're busy ass, man. Even my messages used to be like right on my, if I, if I hit you up, you were like, bang, last couple of times I've hit you up, man. I've been on uh, last last of the day i'm like man he is just so busy i understand don't get me wrong i completely understand make that money brother but yeah that's how busy you must be because like i said before you were like, you're on it i know if you had a second i you'd be right there on my messages so man i'm awesome I, i'm so glad to hear that this year has been such a prosperous year for you man that is that's completely awesome it's been great it's been great and what makes it great created this custom dryer for it was going to help them and they're jumping on eagle they are jumping on some of them like fish to water um they're dialing it in they're loving their dryer this is just it, it it's such i'm so proud and is and i'm so honored to be able to be the one to do this it's it's, it's i'm speechless speechless stop one time because i just i know red just see me hit that uh that uh, energy drink can. That's the same one from the other night, Red. I let it sit there for a couple of days. I told him I was going to knock that shit off because I heard his energy drink story about uh, how it affected him after it. he had, you know, pounded him for a long period of time. I was, it, it was quite the awakening. I was like, man, I ain't drinking that shit again. I got one more in the fridge. And I didn't drink that sh shit for a couple of days, and I broke down, and I got it tonight. But this is the last one. I just had to, I had to get it out of sight. I couldn't waste the money dumping it down the drain. So I just wanted to apologize to Red for uh, breaking my promise and giving that shit up. Mr. Fucking Sequence 3, holy shit, welcome to the show. You know all these names. You've talked to all these people, uh, Scott. Man. I'm glad Sequence uh, showed up. That's all. Hey, Eagle, uh, am I supposed to see the chat? Because, you know, if anyone says a question or something, is that just through you? Is that all how this works? No, no. If you bring up your you, if you were able to bring up your YouTube, you could be watching it and uh, watching the chat as well. I'm on my computer, so I can have, I've got it broke up into two different screens, so I can watch the YouTube on one screen and watch you on the other. That's why I'm trying to read you the questions as they pop up. I wasn't sure if uh, I can't read them right now. I don't think I pressed the button to see the chat, so I just see you and me. That's all I see right now. Yeah, you have to. If you're on your computer, you you could see. Uh, there would be a YouTube thing. You could click on that, and it would bring up both for you. No, I got to so, use my uh, download. Dead. 
download that Zoom on your laptop, and we'll do this definitely again, and you can uh, you can definitely see both or your next interview you, because I know a lot of people use this Zoom format. Yeah, I'll put it on the laptop next time. I, I didn't know, you know, the phone was the first thing I go for. It's the easiest. Everybody's got one. So I encourage it. If that's all I, if, if that's the only way I can get you, I'm perfectly happy with the phone. Oh, you know, no problems. So, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, any, uh, anything else you want to say? Where can we find you? Instagram, uh, the website. You want to get all that out? Where can we find you next? You're going to be on any uh, any more appearances? Uh, tell us what's going on with you personally in the future. Um, <clears throat> got lots of great information on my website. Um, results, reviews. Um, yep, yeah, I want you to check it all out, read it out, make a, make a conscious decision. Um, none of these people were paid, okay, or bribed to say, hey, get out there and check out the dryer and say something good. No, I put my ass on the line, guys. Um, this is real. This is going to help you out if you're having issues. Um, it's a safe alternative. Yeah, in the future, like I said, we got the European model coming out. I'm working on that right now. Um, we have a, a huge, um, a huge people just wanting the herbs now in other countries. Um, I had at least a list of a thousand people um, from all different countries, Italy, France, Germany, shout out to the UK, lots of UK interests, um, Australia, lots of interest down under, down under wants to dry their weed, um, lots of interest in South America also. And uh, yeah, so it's gonna be good. We're gonna keep growing. Um, this ain't going away, you know, we're not going away and uh, you know, I'm just going to keep making it better. I want to be the, you know, the spearhead for you guys for drying. I'm going to be a hub. You know, I'm going to come out with other stuff. I got a few other things going to happen this year. I can't give away all my secrets, you know, because I know the competition's going to be coming. I know there's going to be competition out there, but you know what? I did the testing. I got the results. I got all the answers. These guys, beware. Beware. That's all I got to say. Beware. I got your back. Oh, I want to yeah. get I love the attitude. I really do. I really, really do. <laughs> well, thanks, Eagle. Thanks. I came to win, man. I came to win and help other growers. That's all what it's about. And that's why I made the drive, because I knew like a lightning bolt. It hit me like a lightning bolt. If you could make this tool for the fellow grower, you're going to help thousands and thousands of people have their jars smoke fire. And that's exactly what's happening, Eagle. And I am so glad, dude, really, seriously, all the love. You're a fellow Michigander. You know, that worked out with Sour Harvest. I, I didn't even think you were in Michigan, bro. That fucking, this was meant to be. You know how shit happens? That's just so crazy. You know, a fellow Michigander, you know, I, I get the dryer out to you and you like it. And, you know, it's just. You know, just, Scott, I got to tell you, last year was like a super surreal uh, Michigan, like based year for me. I, was, I had a kind of a calling and drawn into you. And then uh, later that year uh, in May, uh, I was drawn into with uh, Skill Bowl 1 and Sequence 3 here. And they kind of brought me in with the Michigan Bros Grow Show and uh, wanted me to do an interview with them. And they have been so, so kind to kind of let me tag along and uh, be on the Sunday show every week, which I greatly, greatly enjoy. But it's, it was like you said, uh, Sometimes shit's just meant to be and you know, it just blindsides you and just draws everything together like a magnet. And that's the way last year was meant. That's the way last year was for me. Last year, no doubts, was uh, a great year. It just seemed to step up, step up, and step up. And, uh, you know, 2020, I call it 2020, it is my year. And it's my year and everybody else's year too. But, you know, as a goal for myself, I've told myself 2020 is the year I am going to just step up my shit and uh, be the best I can be for the future. So, you know, I'm glad we definitely got drawn together because, you know, Michigan, it was weird because it was like Michigan itself just kind of needed 
everybody to bond together because we, we were talking about this last night on the show with uh, back to Jack's green stock, but uh, we're referring back to the Michigan community. Michigan community is so damn uh, tight knit. You know, we're all reaching out to bond and you know, get to know one of each other and see what each other's growing. And uh, I haven't seen a lot of hatred in the Michigan community as far as, you know, oh, you, my technique's better than your technique. You should be doing this. These nutrients are better than your nutrients. No, it's always been, uh, you know, admiration in each other's gardens, uh, taking in good advice, you know trying great smoke i you, i have nothing but great great things to say about the michigan community i'm so glad i live here and i'm able to be a part of this and again i thank you to the michigan bros grow show to, for helping me you know put me out there a little bit more to put me here you know without you know a little bit of their push you know it, it's been a great year all in all, these great people in chat that follow along, the people that follow along on Instagram, you know, I just, I would be just somebody just sitting here in front of my plants if it wasn't for, you know, you, them, everybody. I appreciate everybody in my life right now. So I just wanted to throw that out there. There's nothing, negativity will bring you shit in your life and, you know, Hesitation don't get you none. So get out there and fucking try and hustle your dreams and uh, do what you got to do. 2020 is a good year to start. Today's a good time to start. You know, you're never too old to start, right? I mean, you're a perfect example of what I'm saying right now. You had a total different career, you know. You, you, you've seen something in your head, a dream. You decided to chase that fucker. And now look at you, you total flip, you're chasing your dream, you love it. I bet you wake up every day. You might be hustling, but I bet you you wake up every day fucking glad to do it. Am I right? Uh, it's and it really is. Uh, but I am. I'm happy. This is a job that I don't, there's no boss over my head. Basically, you know, write my own hours. Um, I have the, I have all the answers to the questions. It is a little stressful, but you know what? It's worth it. It's worth it because I'm still here, you know, Eagle. And you, you, you've you seen the beginning. I had to call you out, you know, on a couple of them comments and shit and a couple of them posts. Hey, Eagle Gardens, you know, check it out. You know, some of these people get all, you know, wild and stuff and being all hate. Hey, let them hate. Let them hate. Yeah. Let them, you know, because we're still here. We're not going away. The haters don't know. Um a lot of hate is stemmed from fear of change or fear of just ignorance of not knowing. And, you know, people get excited. This is not what it's about. I want to help people. We're helping people every day. We're helping growers every day. This is a great thing that, you know, we should be rejoicing in the cannabis community that we can, you know, do it safer and do it better. You know, it should just be a total rejoice. But, you know, that's OK. That's, you know, we're, we're doing it one one grower at a time. I agree. Yeah, what a great time it is, too. I mean, did we, any of us, think that we would ever be sitting here? I never thought in my wildest dreams I would be sitting here having a live cannabis chat with people, you know, great people, sitting in front of, you know, plants that I love. And, what you know, we may have a, a something bad going on right now, but hopefully this is all temporary. But what a, what a great time. What a great time to be alive all together. So, yeah, if you got something, chase that shit. Don't put it off. I got to say that. <laughs> well, heck, yeah. Is there any other uh, messages you want to get out there while we've got things going? Any other uh, things you want to know about Eagle, what Eagle's got going on? Uh, now's the time to ask. I want to know, I think I already asked you this, Eagle, but do you ever grow off this? And do I grow outside? Is that Auto, what you said? Auto flower? No, I, Auto. I no. thought it. No, I tried them a few times. The first time was horrible, horrible luck. The last time I didn't, you know, me, meager success. You know, I wouldn't, 
you know, it just took too time, too much time for me, but you know, there's, I, they, they seem to be stepping up and up and up, you know, I'm not going to not knock them. I'll try them again. No, I it's just, like, if I didn't try them again, I would be just as guilty as the people that are close minded about trying the dryer. Wouldn't I? <laughs> That's the way I guess I feel about that. So, what, uh, do you have a garden yourself? Uh, being busy as hell, do you, are you able to uh, have some plants yourself? Oh, do I have a garden, Eagle? Are you talking to me? Yes, yes. Are you, are you? Do you have a garden? If so, uh, what strains are you growing? Oh, yeah, I have a garden. Heck yeah, I've had a garden. I've had a perpetual grow going here for you know, seven years. Um, I've, nice. I've grown, you know, straight growing brood banner and gorilla glue. Okay. Uh, I've, I've had both of those strains in a loop here for about three or four years. Um, cloning. That's what I do is I just keep cloning and cloning and cloning. Um, occasionally I'll pop a seed or, or a friend will give me a clone and try this out or try that out. Um, if I like it, if I think it's better than what I got going on, um, I'll just dump one of my other strains. And, you know, usually I try to keep two. Um, I don't do more than that. You know, like I know some people keep a lot of strains. I try to keep it down to two. I had a bunch of strains at one point. It just gets a, you know, gets to be a lot, you know, so I try to just keep it to two. Um, but yeah, yeah, I use a uh, thousand watt metal halide and a thousand watt high pressure sodium um i'm looking at led lights i mean i would be nice to save on the electric bill but uh, i haven't got around to purchase them or trying them out yet and uh yeah it's going pretty good leds are definitely worth the investment i just gotta say that you know uh so many pluses i don't even want to get into it as soon as you can make that switch i would quality less in power, you know, plus, plus, plus. That's all I can say about a good LED. <laughs> You've went from uh, the metal pressure sodiums to you switch to LED and you like, you're happy with, with, with the LEDs? I've ran everything all the way through. I've mixed them. You know, the, obviously the best is if you can mix your LED with a little bit of HPS or HPS with a little bit of LED. But uh, if I have to pick one or the other anymore, LEDs have came so far, I'd oh. go with the LED for sure. Oh, great. Wow, that's awesome to hear. Yes, because I know in the very beginning, LEDs and stuff, you know, they, they you know, there was a lot of controversy too. It was just like the dryer. It was a highly controversial topic. And uh, I know the technology has come a long way. And some of these, I've seen tons of pictures from LED grows and they look fantastic, fantastic. So there, I, I don't see a problem with the LED. Um, but I, like I said, I haven't used them. So I don't know. I don't, I don't have no personal experience with them yet, yet. So yeah, I'm excited about it. I'd like to save, you know, a few hundred dollars a month on the electric bill. Who wouldn't? So yeah, burning the midnight oil here. But that's cool. You know, I'm glad we had this first opportunity to uh, to do something like this. It's been a long time, and uh, you know, I really appreciate it, people. Really appreciate it. I appreciate you too, and I'm super glad you come in. And uh, I hope we can do this again really soon. You plan on doing uh, more shows like on a weekly basis? stuff because I, I could come back I would love to be a return guest on your show absolutely I think I lost your sound again I said, I don't think I can still, I still can't hear you.
Can you hear me, Eagle? You guys hear me now? It says it's working. Check, check, one, two. Can you guys hear me? Michigan Bros. Girl Show. If you guys want to jump in, jump in. Here's Native 8. You guys hear me? Hell yeah. Boys, jump in. The number's in the chat if you guys want to come jump in, hang out, talk some shit with me. I'll roll up another fatty and we'll talk. Come on. Let's talk the chat. Get in here. They're in the MBS chat. Get in here, Skibbo, damn it. Smoke and grow, Frazier. Fucking love them. First time I've seen your name, Chad. I hope the mic hasn't been acting up all night. Yeah, as you guys... Has it been good? Has you guys been here able to hear everything all night? Hell yeah, we got tons of time to wait for you, Skibble. Top of another join up. You guys hang out for a little while. So you guys hang out for a bit. Yeah, all right. So yeah, I guess if the mic checked out, we do. Did you guys hear about the guests? Were you able to hear that? Who's coming up the next few days? Got a little bit of clutch playing in the background. Fucking love some clutch. Hell yeah. Well, anyways, if you didn't hear who we got coming up the next few days, tomorrow will be sonsanddaughters.org, the fuck cancer people here in Michigan. 
And then Friday night, we will have uh, T-Dog the Artist, another Michigan-based artist. Super cool man in the community, uh, cannabis community, known for a lot of his artwork. Uh, Saturday, we'll have Liam Mass checking in. Sunday, we may have the American one. If not, hopefully Tuesday night. And Monday, we will have uh, our Michigan brothers, Michigan Bros Grows Show's own Spartan Grown. Spartan Grown, you can also catch him on the Cheap Home Grown and so, so many other places. We've got much love for Spartan, our resident knowledge. Next to sequence, of course, our facts checker, Elliot. Uh, you mentioned the other day something about check out my DM. Who are you on my uh, Instagram? Uh, make sure and let me know because I, if I'm missing some messages, I want to see it. My Instagram has been acting a little fun. Seniors, no seniors here tonight. But uh, if you're a senior, we're more than happy. I got to watch Broly's update. He's uh, agreed to come on as well. Broly and Med Grower One all said they would come on and talk some shit with me. It's just um, we're working on scheduling dates, but that's happened too. Of course, uh, Danny Janko said he'd be on the show. Crazy heads, crazy socks. I know a few crazies on Instagram. So. Show seems to be picking up. Uh, been getting a lot of positive reviews. I gotta thank you guys so, so much for supporting the show and support me and all the endeavors I do on Instagram and whatnot. And people are cool. That's all I can say. Mr. Skillable, let me shut this fucking music off. God damn. So glad to help you have you with us tonight. Yo, what's happening? How much you have it. Did you enjoy the herbs now? Oh, yeah. We've talked to Scott before. We got a show with him. Uh, if you go back through our old library of podcast sequence, and I talked to him last year. <clears throat> well, obviously, we talked to everybody okay. fucking last year. We just started the show. So, you know. Man, I gave you guys, I love you guys. That's for sure. I hope you guys uh, were able to. Yeah, I brought you guys up several times tonight. Expressing my love for you guys and the show. It's been a great year. So well, I hope you guys got to catch it. Maybe I've been in and out, out, man. I've been in and out in my garden. And uh, so I would come over here, hit the bowl a couple times, go back over, get something else done, come back over. So I've had John, I'm though, so. I don't blame you. Some of these shows have been a uh, pretty long winded shit. Last well, you never night. know how long they're going to last. So it's like, it's kind of like a session. You know what I mean? Where like, you have your dudes over and you're like, all right, they're kicking it. I'm going to go get something done real quick. And you come back over because they're yelling, hey, man, fire in the hole. Right on. I can't believe that uh, last night was what? Four hours and 13 minutes. I've, yeah, it was like 410. Shout out, Jack, man. That's my dude. Then uh, Red laid it down three hours and ten minutes. That was an awesome chat, too. Hopefully he jumps in as well. He should. You I don't know. know. Is he still out there listening? I Maybe come back. He was. I, I don't know if I he's there. He'll know. Announced all you guys. A sequence. Everybody's welcome. You know, I like the, the feature's over. Now it's time to uh, talk some shit. So if the bros want to jump in, they're more than welcome to uh, jump in and uh, raid this episode all they want. So, uh, great having you guys on. I love talking to you. You know, Sundays, the Sunday's episode goes by way, way too quick every, every week. So, if I can get a few extra minutes in then with you guys, that's cool. Always, For sure. always happy. I need to fucking get my tray and roll me up a fucking patty. Let's kill. see. I got I got three jars here in front of me on my little workbench. Let's see what I got. I got enough to roll up. 
I guess some the last of the primal punch F2. I get the last of that. Or I have this one is a personal favorite. I have the last of the OG OGO. I have a nice butt of that left. Love the flavor on that. Or I have because I get into this a little bit too much. I've cut it down to the last of the last. I've got enough for a small bowl of the beautiful loser. So I'm not sure which way I'm going to go with it yet. I try to be thrifty with shit, man. I do, man. I try to enjoy and savor the flavor. You know what I mean? It's like, I don't know. It's kind of like when you had that one person when you were growing up that used to grow the great vegetables in their garden. You know what I mean? And you'd always look forward to it as a kid, you know, your grandma would send you home with some shit. It's like that with being able to smoke things from growers that I know and to be able to enjoy and savor the flavor on something that I know that you've taken the time to run the line, pick your keepers, run it again, try to dial it in, you do the proper dry, you do a nice trim, then you cure it, or you use your herbs now, whatever your process is to finish that harvest. When it goes from your hand to mine, I try to think of it in like the, uh, not to sound too corny, I, I guess it's like an old school thing. It's like a gift, you know what I mean? You enjoy it. You don't just throw that shit in the fucking thing and grind it up and smoke through it all at once. I mean, I don't know. It's an appreciation thing. It's grower's love. And uh, see, my, my computer's going goofy again like it did the other night. Like flipping up different screens. It's like moving my Yahoo, my YouTube in and out. My Yahoo. Uh, my AOL. <laughs> Red is AOL. out there. Red <laughs> is out there. He needs to get his ass in here. He's talking okay. about doing a four, uh, four hours and 20 minutes long. Shit. Well, you better get I in here that, then. <laughs> you I better get in here for that. I take that as a challenge. Uh. <laughs> Yeah, he was an ace the other night, man. Uh, the computer all froze up, and I lost control. I didn't know if I – I actually thought – I was like, man, this has such a, been such a great episode, and here it goes. And uh, he just jumped in and, you know, kept talking and kept it all going. It's a pro, just man. Like a, yeah, just like a pro would. and just kept it rolling, and then I it, it came back – for me and we were able to just keep the show roll. Well, the good thing That's about Red is thing. once you get him started on a topic and talking, you can go take a break. It's not that he's not saying anything important, you just know that he's going to continue to say it. So you can, you know what I mean, have those technical difficulties and everything else. Love you, Red. I love you. it. Trying to get him you know, to come That's in my dirty secret. You know, I, I like to fucking, I guess I like to talk and yank a little bit, but I like to sit back and, uh, hear other people's shit more than I do to voice my own. And uh, so when I have the opportunity to sit back and listen like that, it's, that's awesome. You know, Brett got tons and tons of great in. Uh, why wouldn't you want? <clears throat> kind of high. Yeah. You guys yeah. Uh, film an episode tonight? We uh, you guys tried to yeah. Or you were, I thought I seen something in chat like that. Yeah. I, wanna, I don't want to, I'm not trying to release any spoilers. I'm, that's why I'm kind of talking in code. <laughs> talking in code. Talking in code. Here you go. Which one of these should I go with? I think I'm going to go with, I think I'm going to save the primal. So I guess it's got to be the OG OGO. Man, I, I can't believe how patient you are. I would have powered through that shit long ago. You got to spread your shots, man. You know, like, I have a lot of different uh, flour to pick from because it's just me. So when I harvest shit, like, I'm not blowing through it right away. You know, as I've gotten to be a better grower, I've been able to reap the rewards of that. So um, I, you know what I mean? I smoke all day, but I don't smoke blunts or there's my dude what up red 
What's going on, guys? How you doing tonight? This turned into a fucking episode of the late sesh real quick. Turned into a late sesh. Baby, come back. I ran down here so fast. Jump on. Where is here? here? I was catching up on chat. There he is. Okay, what the? Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice. I said, man. I said Candyman three times in the mirror. Now, just now that I'm good. here, I have to go get some weed and I have to fire up YouTube. Uh, that way I can chat with everybody. Right so now. I'll be right back. Dude, yeah, now I was just yeah, hanging out with the fucking guys. boys. You're all happy and shitty. <laughs> it's like, shit. I am. This is fucking, this, this shit just got good. This shit just got good, brother. Did you keep yeah. this OGOGO? Did you keep it? I did. I sure Man. did. I fucking love the smell of that. People yeah, get so tired of that. Like I, can, uh, I can slide you out of that. Red, what you gonna smoke on tonight? I got some blueberry, some DJ Shorts blueberries specifically. Um, nothing crazy. Still working through that. Yeah, still working okay. through it. Nice, dense little fucking nug, isn't it? Dense little bottom nug right there. Yeah. Be nice. As a person, I like to smoke the the B grade myself. Got to treat yourself on these, uh, these <laughs> trying days, brother. Get into that good stash. I got to hold it, man. It's like... It kicks my anxiety into gear sometimes a little too heavy, especially right now. <clears throat> if you get on too much blueberry? No, blueberry's been doing a little... Help me out a little bit. I thought I was going to do okay, smoke some Girls Gone Wild hash earlier. And I was doing all right for a little while. And then yeah, it just took my breath away again. So I don't know. <clears throat> God damn it. Yeah, man. Can't catch my breath lately. It's tough. It'll come back. Baby, come back, brother, yeah. come back. You can get it. My bed. I think, uh, I honestly, remember Red the other night when uh, my computer goofed up on me? I've had a couple of, the first round of troubles I had with Zoom were uh, the multiple browsers. I had uh, Edge on here, the Internet Explorer, and Chrome. It was fighting with them. I figured that out. And I believe now this uh, crazy shit that's happening is because I've got a link computer. I hmm. think for some reason my phone's fucking with my Zoom. Oh, that's that sound weird. weird. Yeah, that's I, weird. I was hoping it wasn't just Zoom. I was, uh, shout out to Gro Gromouse has been back on Instagram for a couple of little episodes there. Um, a couple of little live shows today he was talking about some different lights but for a second he was talking about zoom and uh how it like increased in popularity so much over the last couple months obviously everybody's sheltering in place and things so trying to network on um, zoom's been a real popular item but i guess there's been some security breaches where some some strangers a couple times have like popped into some chats of i don't know like classrooms of kids and stuff and some weirdos are out so i don't know if there's like I don't know if it's anecdotal or what it was, but he was kind of talking about that today in the live. So I don't know if it's Zoom or if it's you or what, man. <laughs> I'd almost prefer to, to be hacked than know it's, you know, me chasing problems around here. At yeah, least, right. You know, if it's hacked, I know the problem. <laughs> at least you know what the it's issue a bummer. is. Exactly. I unplug my shit. I unplug my cameras as soon as I'm done with the show anyway. Dude, you, you got to get one of those stupid it. fucking screen guard things. Like, I have one on my camera right here, so I can just slide it across. It's just a privacy guard thing. It's fucking nothing. It slides right across, comes back open. Then your shit goes funny for a minute until it autofocuses again and back in the game. I don't. I actually, I bought a, it's a webcam. Uh, it, it's a loggy, actually. It was like 60 bucks. This yeah, it's a Logitech, right? Yeah. Yeah. Here's I use my a, laptop. I use a C922 if anybody out there is listening. Uh, it's the same when Sequence and I started doing the bros show. We wanted to try to make sure that we had like similar shit so it wouldn't be jarring. 
So the idea is if we have the same microphone that we can dial our sound in to sound the same, we can never control what our guests sound like, but for consistency's sake, the show will always sound the same. And then we decided he uh, baked is the one that gave sequence a webcam when we started doing the podcast. And uh, so I asked him what he had. And then when it came time for me to buy one, boom, I bought the same one. So it, it, it tries to what, be consistent. I've, I've had some fucking brainstorming here the last few days. And uh, I think I've got some proposals I want to approach the, the MBS with that I think would benefit everyone. Everybody's always um, down to listen. Yeah. Um, I don't want to. I don't like to talk on air because then somebody might snatch your eye. You got that. So, but uh, and some cool shit that I found, or uh, it thought about anyway. So, remember to ask me about that shit, Dad, or whatever. Oh yeah. But it hit me. It was one of those things that kind of. As I was looking at encoders and shit, ways to get around the uh, Zoom, I come up with some shit. And uh, especially like you got like, all technical and shit, like amazing what a little bit of fucking time on Google will do you, isn't it? You can rely. Like, okay. Yeah. All right. No, I, I actually uh, I found figured a way how we could. Uh, I will talk about this though, because if you got the capabilities to do it, then power to you. <laughs> um, I figured out how we could do a cross episode. We both have to do it live. Right. Okay. Um, you guys would have to do it because you have the uh, more viewers and have the uh, live stream capability from YouTube. I think you would have to uh, try to stream it live through your YouTube because I don't have the viewers. I can't do it like but I can use my Zoom, but I can't log into multiple accounts unless you have like a super business account. And then you may be able to do the multiple host thing. But. It'd be so weird because like you would think, like let's say it's just typical, uh, like a late session with me and Red. So typically it's just two cameras here. And then I guess when we joined the call, then it would turn into three like this. Be weird. Yeah, fuck it. I don't know. It would work. I mean, just joining a call really. Right. Yeah, I think that would work. It's fun stuff. Fun stoner thoughts of uh, shit to do. You and I always get stoned together and come up with these weird fucking like ideas and shit. Like we were talking about That's woodworking one time when we were at Vehicle City, and uh, I was like, you know what, dude? I've had this idea I've kept under my hat for like a year now, and I dropped it on him. He was like, oh, we could totally fucking do those. Those are easy as shit. So, you know, you get high. You, you bring your idea to life for somebody else and maybe they help polish it off and turn it into like uh, reality. So if you watch this show the other day, I'm not saying you have to or you should. Actually, it had been so long. I Fuck that. Plug anybody. your shit. Tell them to watch your show, man. You know, Be confident in your product. Let it play in the background and work and do whatever. But uh, I had a, one of a plan in here I had in the back I, that I thought was beard on fire, but I pulled it out and I'm like, man, this smells good. This ain't beard. Well, not that beard on fire smells shitty, but it didn't smell. It wasn't beard on fire. Okay. Right. And I'm like, it was fuely and piney. I'm like, man, chopping into it. Nice buds. I'm like, this is really nice, but it ain't that. So I pull out the tag and I flip it around. Pine Valley three, really? I was hoping yeah. you were going to say Pine Valley too. And uh, what a great surprise that was, man! She, I've got it in the herbs now dryer right now. They actually overflowed the dryer. I've got some over here, some big old giant nugs on. Uh, I mean, good size grenade size buds. It was a nice yield here. You know, it was uh, like a. So what pine. smells are coming through on that? Are you getting any kind of a pineine shots? You know, you know, yeah, Jack's out yeah, there listening. Yeah, he said. He's, he was kind of saying when I talked to him at one point, like a maple syrup. And I was like, eh, okay. But what I got was uh, it's more piney, uh, or more pine pronounced with a little bit of lemon on the back end. Which is common. With, uh, with a little bit of fuel. 
mm-hmm. on it. So it's like a fuely pine, I want to say. But uh, really enticing. I Tastes like 2010. It's sounds been like a Death great Star. year for them. We had, it sounds uh, like Death Star. The lemon lava drops. Then the oh, time I love that one. Matrix, which I love. Yeah, uh, man. Now, see, I think that one, I think that is gone. I think I, I dusted that one off. Shout out to Mr. Tight, of course. Valleys. This is only the first one out of four. So we have, uh, you know, there's possibilities. Who's the breeder on that? That is GMX OG from Ocean. Oh, from right Japan. on. You, uh, you go, uh, find that OG drone yeah, uh, drop shot one was drop asking, shot. how do I get a hold of this Pine Valley? So there you go. Check out his uh, Instagram. In the dominatrix, which is equally as delicious, you would find from uh, that's Empire. Empire. Yeah, Our I friend, seen that he was doing the push for the primal punch today. Yeah, yeah, there's a new release over there. So, if you guys have been looking for primal punch from Medgar or one, shout out definitely go check out empirebreeding.com right now. I'm not sure if they sold out, but earlier today they were dropped. He stocked, yeah. And nice little talk with uh, Mr. Tight today, or uh, yeah, player breeding company, and uh, pretty cool. I always like chatting with him. He's a great guy. What was his flagship? Wasn't it like sex tape or married with children? Or one of those? Those were the first. No, drops. the flagship was uh, lemon lava drops and barbecue gorilla. Barbecue. Okay. Uh, yeah. Right on. Very cool. Very cool. I had uh, both. Uh, going at one time and uh, <laughs> that was during a soil run super soil when super soil goes wrong <laughs> yeah. I was normally cocoa and then I was trying to messing around with the super soil type shit and I uh, trying to go full weed nerd sub cool way right yep through it well my problem always, I've always loved the idea of the super soil but uh I can't keep up, you know, I don't have, you know, that's a lot of cans laying around in a two month period where you have to stay ahead while that stuff cooks. That's even, that's really, really being on your game. So I, I did try some, you know, pretty much. And then thing I got rushed, yeah. <laughs> got rushed. The same you problem I'm talking about right now. Sure. And, Red, uh, that looks good. They got Thanks. into flour and they got out of control. And uh, I was like, yeah, fuck this. Say something, Red, so people can see that jar. Hold that back up so people can see that and say something. Uh, This is uh, Death Star hash processed in July of 2019. This is the very, very last crumbs of that, Red. The very same one. Oh, nice. Ah. I got a little bit more from that same batch. Yeah. Uh, I'll be sure to bring it to the next gathering. However, <clears throat> I have some fresh Death Star that should be coming down soonish. soonish. I really want to try that when it's done because I want to see which one it really is. You know what I mean? And Absolutely. Like, yeah. Uh, I'm excited to. Uh, I'm excited that Sequence is also running a cut, of mm-hmm. it, and I'm excited to see if we have the same cut. Why that bloodhead didn't jump in? He knows yeah. he's got an open invitation. That one, that's why I put it there so he could see that shit too. He's probably asleep by now, man. Like, oh, it is a been, work night, isn't it? I forget. Yeah, he's had to work through this whole thing, man. So, shout out to Sequence. Yeah, seriously. Definitely, everybody loves Sequence. There we go. Rest Taking well, brother. Business, man. Mm-hmm. God damn, yeah, sucks I would be excited. To, I would. I'm sorry, <laughs> Dude, I'm going stir fucking crazy, man. Fuck. Like, I just sleep when I fucking want to. I just get baked all fucking day, like, and turned up to like the nth fucking degree, too. Not like just a little bit, like, oh, I think I'm just going to smoke a little bit more. Like, no, I think I'm just going to drop a fucking cinder block on this accelerator and just chief all day long. Then they all all the days start running together and shit. Like fuck, man. I have no Ooh, idea. Stay safe out there, folks. Yeah, you gotta get at least get out and walk around the yard a little something. Oh, you're in the city though, aren't you? Fuck How yeah, deep man. are the city are you? Are you like city city where? Like, I'm like city city, dude. Yeah, like city city. 
Yeah. yeah. So like, I think what I'm going to do is I think I'm going to hop on my fucking mountain bike and uh, I know some, some routes to get off of it real quick and be able to hit the trails for a minute. Cause I'm, you know, like working in the food service industry, dude, I'm used to being on my feet, like lateral movement, spinning, doing everything. See, it, like we don't have the camera set up, right. But red is in the other camera is nodding his head off. Like when you work in a kitchen, dude, it's perpetual motion constantly. And you're constantly trying to think of like seven things at once and then time those things in your head. So you're doing like 95 miles an hour typically. And to go from that to this screeching halt of like, oh, well, P.S., just, you know, chill out and we'll get back with you when the industry opens back up. That's so now I just smoke a lot more weed. I mean, I cooked for a long time. Mm-hmm. I respect the only fuck it gets job. harder when you get older dude like there's a reason that you don't see old people doing the job very much people don't realize how hard it is to time out fucking 50 tables you know all the meals and whatnot yeah. in yep. sync and in quick dollar bit. why is my food late well i don't know we're busy and when we're coordinating 50 different meals we're doing the best we can I come from the, I mean, I've been doing this since I was like, not perpetually, but I started doing it when I was 13. So um, I'm fucking old, man. And I've done this for a lot of different restaurants and I've done it for a lot of different people and a lot of different setups. But one thing that has stuck to me is once you work in like, Shout out to the Michigan Coney Island fucking community. Once you work in a Coney Island or something like that, where it's all about speed and no mistakes and repetition and everybody stay in your fucking spot and just do what the fuck you're told. Like, that shit sticks with you. So your timing is the one thing you have to have. You gotta have timing. When you're like 14 working in a kitchen being yelled at by like 45 year olds. For- yep eight hours straight i mean not nope. yelled at but like hollered and screamed at nope. for like eight hours straight <laughs> see like as that 45 year old dude i smoke more weed than anybody that i fucking work with so i'm always more chill about everything so like i can walk in in the fucking kitchen like something will be on fire like hey man that's on fire instead of coming in and like throwing shit and like they're already under fucking like massive stress obviously because the situation is completely fucking gotten out of hand so why I, intensify that? There's enough assholes in the fucking industry. They don't need me to be another one. That's why everybody fucking digs working with me because I'm just, I don't know. I'm, I'm kind of the way I'm, I'm the kind of the way you think I would be to work with. All of them. I would I would love to work with you in that oh, dude, type yeah. of a setting, Scobo. So it's fucking you great and trenches, Eagle man. too. I bet we I bet we tear it up in the kitchen together. To Get the tents yeah, going. I kind of lucked out. When I was 14, I had already had experience. I'd worked a couple summers in a machine shop, so I had already kind of knew you know trash talking and all that yeah, just stuff. go I with kinda, it right yeah i was in, I, I did machine shop labor under the table when i was like 13 years old those metal like, shavings had it in me yep yep mm. you guys are watching along in chat or in the future episode this is a call out for you to uh this is a dab call if you have it dab it <laughs> hashing the bowl here if you have it dab it that's good chairs. Grab your joints, your pipes, your bongs, your bowls, your blunts. I still work now. Fat uh, hookahs. Dude, I was using my vaporizer earlier today. Like, I never fucking use it. Um, does anybody out there know what a silver surfer is? It's like um seventh floor vapes. Oh, look. There we go. Dab time. Let me see. Let me pull this thing down. That was nice. That was the last of that. Uh, well, there's still a little bit left in there. That uh, Maui Wowie. You see those? Yeah, you can see those. So these are glass parts, and you have like the whip in between. So it's nice because it's a glass on glass connection with the vaporizer, which is really just a ceramic element. Let me grab that real quick. Is that what the Silver Surfer is? Is a vaporizer? Yep. Let me do this without knocking fucking everything over. Because you know how that goes on your desk. You've always got shit all over the place. Domino, motherfucker. 
Yeah, man. There's always like a one single cord. Like in this instance, it's the cord that goes to the <laughs> webcam. Of course, it's in the fucking way. Here we go. Let me drag this thing over here. Dirty bong water all over there. Yeah, Actually, so, you probably see? don't have dirty yeah. bong water. No. So like they they put like a dope ass fucking marble on here and shit. Well, that thing's sweet. Yeah. Oh, and yeah. the back of it is glass. So when I turn this on, like so you get the little red light down here and shit. So it doesn't fill a parachute or anything. You just get the smoke out of it. No, you can get the one above this uh is obviously more expensive. It has the fan unit in it. Um that's called a super surfer, I believe. And it has the ability to, it's just like this one but it has a fan unit underneath so instead of using the whip you would have a different fucking wand piece that has the clip on it and the bag goes on and everything my dude that oh, turned okay. me on to these that's the model he has but uh i've had this for a while man i really really dig it i just don't use it nearly enough because honestly when you vape it it tastes differently so i prefer the taste of a joint over just about any other way to smoke. Vape weed is a weird taste, isn't it? It's a different taste for sure. I mean, it's, it's all like about how you tea out of. You ever make tea out of your weed? Like, just try to like. No, just I've try been. To, no, you know, I I did that a long, long, long time ago in my like early twenties. I was like, I'm gonna try making some tea. Just try to put it in hot water. Curious, you know? But how I was mean, the bug? Was it just like a good edible? Are you talking about the tea? Yeah. No buzz, man. Hardly any buzz. I don't think so. It'd be THC. It was because it was THCA. Yeah, it was just a lot of uh, um, what? Uh, I'm lost on words, man. Here, I'm making some tea right now. Oh, is that alcohol tincture? That's alcohol tincture, right? Yeah. That's the good stuff. So what? That'll rock your world. What this is right here? No, this one should not. (laughs) Um, this. I have written down on here. I always, whenever you do like tincture work or something like that, you should always write down like what you did and what day you did it and everything else. So this is a cold tincture that I did on March 22nd. Okay. So today is the second now. Oh, so it hasn't been that long. Okay. It hasn't been that long. Gotcha. But what I did was I took, well, obviously a whole shit ton because it's just barely covering. And if I just move it just a little bit, you'll see that that's, solid i need okay. to get a pickle jar man that's exactly that's what, what I this need is to, yeah this thing, that's this what i need to use instead of my industry giant ball jars with i can't you know it's so hard yeah. to like it, it whole, it's it's easier out. to do this in usually yeah. i mean this is the first time that i've done it like this um when i got into tincturing i started off using a magic butter machine and um like it uses heat, it tells you to decarb and everything else. So in the beginning, you know, you should definitely do what is recommended. And especially when you realize that most people that are trying to make a tincture are trying to make a tincture to get fucked up off of. Okay. There's nothing wrong with that, man. What I'm saying though, is you want to take the time to decarb because every form you go to, do I have to decarb? No, you do not have to. This is not decarbed. But this is also not psychoactive in the least, or it should be very little psychoactive. I mean, there will be some conversion of THCA to THC through degradation and everything else. There is just a natural decarboxylation on things if it's dry. And that's what I started with was dry material. I bet it would be reasonably potent if you left it for a good. Yeah, but it wouldn't be what people like the way that I can do it. You know, I've made some I've got a bottle up there that is. Hold on, let me just grab that. Always be careful with this shit, too. Because it is glass and it will break. So this is typically what I store things in. So this one is definitely decarbed. This is what I use to make all of the topical roll-ons and everything else. Um, Let's see. And this is a smaller bottle of it label um and i just use an eyedropper so like when i come down here in the morning i make my coffee i put two eyedroppers in bam good to go 
so now that I derailed the whole fucking conversation, go back to whatever it was because I'm high. No, and I, I, I kind of dig what you were talking about, and I like that big ass jar of tincture because it. I would like. Well, this is going to be I the next that, batch I mean, of um, so roller balls. rollers. Yeah, this is going to be roller balls <laughs> yeah. next. So I bought all the little fucking. I would roll roller balls. Yeah, you ball. could take like you could take like a cup, take like eight ounces off of that alcohol, and just double boil it down and get yourself a couple good solid doses of Vico for yourself. You know, you don't for have sure. to like go full bore with it. You can no, just do a small have to reduce batch. the whole thing. I know I should do yeah. that. What were you gonna say, Eagle? Speaking of uh, the roller balls, there I've been doing the show. I haven't got up. I didn't know Skill Ball was gonna be here. Had a little shoulder pain. Yo, yo, right out of my pocket. There it is, man. Brother. So, Appreciate that. Thank you. There's no way, no way in hell I knew you were coming on just to fucking didn't have that in my pocket just to show you. <laughs> no, I hate I hate like trying to I hate it's talking use, about it. Man, it's in use. That ain't yeah. just bullshit. Well, I know I hate talking about it because I always feel like either A, I've said all this shit like 17 times previously, and somebody out there is like a loyal listener and is like Oh, for fuck's sake, skill boat. We've heard it all. Okay. So there's that side of it, right? But then there's the other side of it is I don't want to sound like I'm shilling my own shit. So whenever somebody says something nice about it, it always makes me feel good. So I like hearing about your, your tincture process and your roller balls. It, it keeps it fresh, you know. You might have switched up your uh, your process since the last time we talked about it. You never know when that person's out there that's going to need that knowledge. You know, it is. every it's conversation's a new person, and that person might fucking need that shit. Yeah. So, so you know, thank if you. if somebody out there is listening, like on a just a general, because I don't want to give somebody like a recipe for this, because there is there's no recipe for this. There's like an understanding of like what you're trying to do, <laughs> this, and you just have to experiment with it for yourself. But it's understanding that I make these topicals to help with inflammation for the most part. So if it's an inflammatory issue, I want to use things that are going to help with inflammation. So that's going to be things like the cannabis alcohol tincture. Um, it's going to be things like Arnica. Like you can get Arnica oil and it is for bruising, swelling, things like that. You pick it up at TJ Maxx for like 10, 12 bucks, or you can just buy it on Amazon. Um, and then you're gonna look into, you know, like your, you're gonna, uh, this is basically all plant-based thing. So now what you're gonna do is you're gonna use like the oils from other plants that are known to help with things like that. So you're gonna look into things like peppermint, or you're gonna look into, uh, frankincense or cedarwood or I mean okay so see drop shot one appreciate that brother he's like that's why I'm here I'm all ears so you're going to look into things that you can use that naturally help fight inflammation the nice thing is is that these are also pretty good for doing like antimicrobial and antifungals so if you have some weird shit going on with your skin, I'm not saying you should apply it to an open wound or anything. You definitely don't want to do that. But uh, it can kind of chill some of that shit out or kind of make it go away too. So look into doing that. You know, you when you get done with your harvest, you obviously have larf. You obviously have trim. You obviously are doing something with that shit. So why not try doing this with it for yourself once? Even if you don't have any aches and pains, I guarantee you that if you're listening to me talk right now, you know someone that would probably benefit from this. So look into it, you know, be compassionate. That's it. Good, good segment where I can, because uh, I just was noticing here in chat that uh, how glad Drop Shot One was that uh, he caught at the show tonight. <clears throat> And I just want to point out, you can also catch these guys on their channel and get a lot of knowledge over there on the MBS channel, Michigan Bros Growth Show channel. Skill Bowl, they're always dropping some great knowledge over there. And if you tune in on the right day, Sundays, you can even catch me on there. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, 
be sure to uh, check these guys out on their channel as well. I, but I'm so super glad I get to add them to the fucking. Now I get to go back and add the mix my title back up from uh, featuring my herbs now to with bonus guests Michigan Bros Grow Show because we're adding Skillbow Red Setter and Skillbow will be way too long for a title. So I'm just gonna put bonus guests MBS. So. I appreciate you guys jumping in. I love this year. Drop shot that. one. Yes, you can contact me about this. I think earlier I had mentioned something about Instagram to you, and you said you didn't have it. So if you haven't, if you have email, you can email me. At oh, you know what he can do, Skillbo, is he could go over to your uh, YouTube, Skillbo17, and I believe he could uh, at least get on one of your vi videos and comment there, correct? And reach you that way. You guys could comment and can't perceive. I mean, worst worst I mean, case, right? Sure. Yeah. Or the Michigan Bros Grow Show channel on one of their shows. Uh, you could probably reach Skillbo there as well if you want to, you know, get a knowledge drop. If you're not on Instagram, that's what I'm saying. If you Definitely. you're not on Instagram, you always could reach out through YouTube and uh, get some knowledge that way too, direct. I would think. Yep. So let me just do a real basic quick one just in case that he has difficulties with or somebody else there is listening. Meanwhile, I'm rolling up another one of these OGOGOs. I love getting stoned and hanging out with you guys. It's good shit, man. Me um, too, man. I'm feeling good tonight. Oh, right on. He says that he watches every Sunday as well. So good shit. Okay. Good. Thank you for checking us out. Oh, yeah. Thank you for uh, coming this way, eh? checking the show out and coming to check me out as well. Appreciate that 100%. So what you could do is I'll do it a couple different ways. Let's just do me first. Me is, like I said, I just grow for myself. So when I harvest a plant, I smoke on it strong. And then the next time a plant comes up to harvest, I cut it down, dry Akira. Now I start smoking on that. But I have leftovers of the first one. So over time, what's going to happen is you don't want to have all these jars. So I have the classic Snickle Fritz jar which I know that I'm going to take all of this shit and I'm going to turn it into tincture. So I fill up that pickle jar. I fill it up completely with bud. And then, so that ends up being like a QP, right? So then what you're going to do, if you're doing like my usual way would be that I would want to make it psychoactive. So I would take it, put it in a glass Pyrex, I would put a turkey bag around it, seal it up with a fucking zip tie, toss it in my oven to decarb it. Everybody does a different time and temperature. I'm not going to debate what, what it is. I'm just going to tell you what I've done for the last, uh, what is it, six years now. I've always done 240 for 40. Um, I know some people say 235, some people, whatever. It's cool. Just come up general vicinity. This is it's not that important, really. You're either trying to decarb it or you're not. Let's just not fucking argue about stupid shit. Anyway, so once I get decarbing it, I would stick it in the magic butter machine, which is not in my shop right here. It's somewhere else right now. But um, you can look up what that is. You toss it in there. It's basically an immersion blender and with a small heating element in the bottom. So the immersion blender only operates for like five or 10 seconds every 15 minutes or so. Other than that, what it's doing is it's got a minimum or a maximum fill line inside of it. So you make sure that you have, at the end of it, you make sure that you have at least the minimum line full. So you cover it with alcohol. In my instance, this is how I make mine. But you can also do like coconut oil or any other kind of simple sort of, you know, like um, if you wanted to do olive oil or grapeseed oil or something like that. Or if you wanted to, if you wanted to, um, do like some kind of medicated lotion or something you could use the machine for that too anyway back to the story so you stick it in there and really with this machine all you're going to do is you're going to set the time and the temperature so you set it for the lowest temperature setting which if i remember off the top of my head i think it's 135 and then you can set it for either like a four hour or an eight hour tincture the way i've always done mine is i've ran it for eight hours i've left it in the container overnight to rest and then in the morning, I would turn around, I would run it eight more hours. And at the end of that, I would strain it through. I've always used a, um, 
called a nut milk bag. If you Google that on Amazon, they're really, really, they're not that expensive, 12, 13 bucks. And they are a really fine screen that really can take some abuse because you're really going to want to wring out uh, the, the leftovers, basically, the botanicals from the tincture. Um, Eagle and I had talked about this a couple weeks ago. He had mentioned, and I took his advice and bought one, was a jelly strainer, which hooks up to, I use a Pyrex always to strain into. I used to use... Um, did you get the bag or did you get I the did. kit? I got the kit. I got, so I got the, the metal thing that goes right on to the Pyrex, you know, the 32 ounce that I drain into anyway, yeah, awesome. which is perfect. Oh yeah, it's fucking perfect. Man. And it's nice because I can actually, I'm going to use the bag that came with it just to try to see how well it strains. But either way, I could still even use the nut milk bag that I have using the same fucking contraption setup that hooks up with the metal bars. So it's perfect either way for me. It, it, I appreciate that. I've always I wanted to have it. a way to fucking do that. And I'm just kind of like, eh. I used to use like a simple strainer that I would sit on top of the, uh, the Pyrex. And then I would leave the bag with all the shit in it and let it just drain out until I don't see any more drops coming from it. Then I would save that. Then you could turn that into um, like bath bombs or whatever, the leftovers. Just look up a simple bath bomb recipe and fucking put some of that duff, which is what I'm going to call it at this point. It's like duff. Put some of that duff that's left over from that and rock and roll. You're going to be perfectly happy with that because I use that uh, jelly strainer myself for butter and uh, put on rubber gloves and squeeze the shit out of that bag. And I've never had material get past that that bag. So I'm for a tincture for something that's uh, quite a bit thinner. Perfect. And why I've got you, why I've got the mic here, I want to ask you this. <clears throat> Just because I'm like a mad scientist when I get in there and play with my magic butter machine. Oh, I forget you have one too. So it is 135, isn't it? I th yeah. I'm pretty sure that's what it is on it. Do you do, how do you do yours? Let me just ask you that. I you probably do it differently. I've never what? made things. No. Oh, no, fucking I, A. I've had mine strictly for butter. And I've yeah, but you make, you make hash, so that's what you do with your post harvest, is you're hashing it, whereas I've tinctured mine. Well, sometimes I make butter, though. I take some of that material, and I will uh, either take some of the trim, or sometimes I'm known to just throw in a fucking half ounce or an ounce of butter in there with, you know, 10 sticks of butter and yeah. uh, mix because I always make it strong, strong. That way I can at least, uh, you know, reduce it down and mix it with more butter. for right. whatever. You can cut it or with real butter for your, for your, your meal. So if let's or say you're trying I can to make, make, or make something super strong, which I like to do, Just which for me. leads me yeah. up to the mad scientist thing. If I were to make tincture, I would do this. That's why I'm asking you if you've ever done it, mad scientist like style. So you've got your tincture sitting there. It's right. all steamy and warm. Have you ever took a shot of it? Like, uh, cause Absolutely. it's alcohol. Absolutely. Like fucking warm sake, just but pick one back. But it's like, I don't take like a whole shot of it. Okay. So because the shit will take your breath away. Um, Use Everclear, right? So, Is that what you're using? Yeah, you use the highest proof alcohol you can get. So in this instance, um, I did use Everclear um, that I sourced from when I was down in Georgia. So it did a better job of extracting. But let's say that you can only get the 153 or the 158 or whatever. So you have to realize that this shit will like knock you the fuck out. Like there's a real, think of how much you have so let's say that you started off with the fifth and you end up with fucking eight ounces, right? Do the dosage on that. How much cannabis is that? So in other words, how many droppers full do you need to be medicated with that? And see, it sucked because in the very beginning when I first learned about tinctures was before I even had a card. And they were like, oh, you only need a few drops of this, like three or four drops. And I'm like... Okay, so, you know, obviously it burns, you know, but there was like no effect from it whatsoever. So what I've done is I'll take like two eyedroppers full at my ratio and put that in my morning coffee. And that seems to really help. Like when you're old, you your inflammation is worse, like first thing in the morning or last thing at night. You're either trying to like get stretched out and 
ready to go for the day or you've already put your day's work in and you were at your best form and now you're tired, you've been sitting down and your shit's starting to fucking get a little tight. So, And I've hit that roller ball during stressful moments <clears throat> right on the temple mm-hmm. on each side. Yeah. And uh, it helps, man. It calmed me right the hell down. It yeah. could be a combination of it just soaking up into that frontal lobe where it should be. That's where the brakes is for you. No, right? it's a, it's an olfactory thing, man. And then the your uh, the oils on top of it that mm-hmm. is it mint you put in there. There's some what is the essential oil you throw in there? You've said it a thousand times, but I know you said it tonight. Oh, there's just a bunch of them. It's just anything that you can think of that is good, good for inflammation. Yeah, you know. Yep. It's like outdoory. It makes you feel like mm-hmm. you just stepped outdoors. And well, we were talking about Pine Valley Kush, right? So one of the things is we're talking about pining on that. So if you were to use, for instance, since it's right here, if you were to use this, the proper term is called Pinus Sylvestris, uh, you would be able to really really feel that pining so if you sniffed this it would be like pine bomb so if you put a few drops of this in here that's going to help you get a little bit of mental clarity it's going to make you like you know so something to look into i don't want to purport like a whole bunch of crazy shit and then somebody tries to fucking mom me for it listen here's how easy this is I bet you 50 people have tried this. Nobody's fucking bitched about it. Nobody's complained about it. Everybody that's tried it is like surprised and happy with it. So I feel like it helps people. I feel like if you can learn to make this shit for yourself, you can help people. And all together, everybody gets helped. Yeah, man, that entourage effect goes beyond cannabis exclusive, you know, like, you can eat mangoes for the effect of high myrcene and then smoke high THC cannabis and get an entourage effect off the mango myrcene. You could be in a pine forest engulfed in high pining fragrance just off of the scent alone that's in the air and smoke a high THC mm-hmm. cannabis and get incredibly elevated off of the entourage effect of pining, you know, just like those drops right there with you. It's really, I love that, man. You just don't it doesn't even have to be strictly cannabis sorry to cut you off man and just grab a hold that but i love the entourage I, effect you i like the, what you're thinking there and I, I, it's what i kind of my daughter who was uh popped into chat who, earlier lexi my middle daughter <clears throat> who uh does battle with anxiety uh from time and time and again uh I don't know if you guys remember her story, but she was in, uh, she was the one that was in the car accident. Yeah, I do. And uh, CBD helped her get off of the stuff <clears throat> that she was using for anxiety. Have her smell well, that. She, she's not a, a marijuana user herself. I, she's always taken uh, CBD in as with a pen. She's always used yeah, it that way. That's the way my daughter is too. And then she bitches about, you know, like I get fucking paranoia. Well, yeah, because it's like you don't know what the source is on your pen. You know what I mean? Like it could be some sativa shit or whatever. But, but she relies on uh, lavender in the diffuser, you yeah. know. I keep telling her, you know, Lex, you'll probably really benefit it from some pine or alternating the lavender. No, there are there are strains that will be tested for high in linalool, which is the which is what is which makes lavender fucking sedative and calming is the linalool. So if you find strains that are higher in that, you know, you may find that those could be very medical for her. If so if you are dealing we're, with any kind talking, of insomnia uh, or are we talk we're still talking cheap for in her case it's essential oils and a diffuser. No, but you can find it in cannabis too though. All right. You know, right. so some of your lavender strains, mm-hmm. you know, if you see this is why it would be great in ten more years when like testing is not a big fucking deal and it's cheap. So that everything can get tested and you could learn all this cool information about what you're growing. So if you're one of those weirdos like me that just cares about this, like as medicine shit, you know, you'll be able to go, hey, you know what, man, 
I've really looked into like what helps me the most in my whole endocannabinoid system and shit. And the testing shows that this strain over here, like that looks like those keys are going to fit my system and help me fucking feel better. Sweet. Let me look into those. It's nice when uh, it not only helps you, but then all of a sudden it helps uh, a family member that didn't believe in it before or something like that. An older family member that looked down on it that is now, wow, this really works for me. Look at this, skill ball. Look, that's how much love I got for you guys. Watch as I move my head. Watch. What's yeah, that right yeah. there? Huh? there I was huh? checking that out earlier. That's that's awesome back there. I never noticed <laughs> it before. I saw it earlier. I was like, ah, oh, there's a stick back. Well, make sure they get a peek of that shit, even when I'm not fucking, if whenever possible. That's how much support I got for you guys. I want to make sure it's always out there for you guys. So, what's looking good in your tent right now? Everything. Ah. Uh, um, I'm getting ready. The Primal Punch, too. You know, I've been really digging on that. The Dominatrix. Pine Valley's looking good. Uh, you want to... I, I can reach over here and grab some of these uh, Pine Go Valley. But sure. The sure. rest of them are stuff. I was just showing the other ones off in the, the dryer earlier in the show. But these are the ones that are, you know, still on a stick. We were kind of talking about that too, how he was talking about standing them up and uh, you know, whatnot. Why stand? I, I don't like standing them up when I can chop them buds up, make them as small as I can just to where, you know, you've got that tip of that nice long bud and you have more, some more popcorn, not popcorn ish. There's good solid nugs, but you've eliminated that big stalk from that, you know, gigantic cola. And you'll kind of see because some of these are still intact because they hung. I, I trimmed them down to the bud, but, you know, they're still on the sticks in bud form. But normally if they were to go in the dryer, I would bury these buds down. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? You grow with sure. You trim that. Uh, so these are, uh, I filled that dryer. You have one skill bowl? No, I do not. I have a version of my own that I got a few years ago on Amazon. It's not made for cannabis, but it's a, it's a dryer, rack dryer, just like that with convection. Pine Valley's filled the dryer, okay? And I had to bust out my old hanger system. Somebody was asking in chat uh, what our methods were or what they could do until they got a dryer. And this is how I do it. I, I trim her down. I hang them on these. Mm -hmm. And from here, I used to, my four by four tent, go, or so this is just as good. If you don't have room for the four by four tent, you can go to Walmart and get you like a portable closet. Yeah, or a, exactly. You know what I'm talking about? I do, absolutely. Like yeah. And they have curtain rods in them and you can do this and they're uh, like a canvas like a forest that's a great canvas. great fucking tech you can even cut a hole in the side of it and put like a four inch fan in there you know what yeah. i mean if you wanted to get real bougie with it you could put that on a cyclical timer so it comes on you know like for fucking two minutes every 10 minutes or something keep cycling this the air was through there. The, the very end of it okay the very last hanger after the plan but uh I show the why do why do I show this shitty hanger first? GMX OG is probably like you dick, <laughs> but them are fat nugs there. You know what I mean? Let me yeah. get back on there. That's more this. You know, I'm at the point where I don't give a shit. Like, like I don't this. care how big the nugs are anymore. I really don't because like we've all seen the fucking shit going around now. That's like little teeny shit. Like Dosey Doe. Dosey Doe is not like a huge fucking bud that I've ever seen. It's usually small, right? Well, that's what I'm saying, Skill Bowl. You, you see these right here? Yeah. This, you're not going to, I'm not going to fucking throw this in your bag. A, I don't want, I don't like the idea. I should have said this when Scott was on. I don't like the idea of this hanging in one big piece, holding in that fucking moisture and taking a possibility of rotten when I can't control my room conditions. When 
I can chop these things down to smaller nugs. Sure. Uh, and uh, let me set this thing here aside here. Well, I give you credit for that because that's really more organized than what I do. I just whack them at the fucking base of the ground. And then I figure out where I'm going to hang it off of like a specific area. And I just dry the whole fucking thing at once. Because I I always have like humidity issues of like less than 50%. Okay, I'm going to. I want my shit to dry slower. We could do this and we're fucking whatnot. This is a, all right. We got a good size bud. This is exactly what I'm talking about. Okay. This bud, you hang this thing right here. And not, not to mention, if you were a patient, you know, this sticks quarter inch around. That's a lot of, that's paying for a lot of stick. Yeah. 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 I wouldn't want this. I'd be pissed. Okay. Two, if you're going to hang dry this, you're harvesting a lot of moisture and there's, you're inviting bud rot on a, a high humidity you know, type week or whatever, you're a bad harvest week. Wow, you're really risking some shit. If you can't cut this bud down and spread her out. Now, even if I wasn't uh, doing this method, I think I would ha- still cut this down. Put it but on the even screen. Even in my dryer, this isn't going in my dryer. Okay, well, let me show you what this is going to look like and what the buds will look like after I'm done, okay? This is before. And I'm just going to trim this off on my little pad of paper here. And tell me if you wouldn't still be happy with these nugs in your bag, okay? Now, I'm not I'm not cutting down popcorn. That's what I want. I'm trying to tell you, okay? I still will end up. You'll get this one fat tip of the bud. You see that right there? Mm-hmm. I might stop right here just so you get. This is your cheese bud, okay? Yep. This is that bud in the bag that you go. Oh yeah. I'm yeah, but don't leave too much stick on that. Though. Ass yeah. right there. I'm setting that aside, and I'm going to put that in my little plastic thing. And that's my little fucking, that's the last nail there, okay? So, this is that same bud, okay? I just chopped this up. It's right here. Now, these nugs are going in the dryer. These aren't, that's not no baby nug. And why, you know, why, so why pass that bud, big old butter on? Why keep it in one piece to, to invite that moisture and mold when I can break it down, air it out? It just makes more sense. Everybody's happy. You no, know, no patients are getting stuck with logs. These are still excellent buds. Now I got to throw it in the dryer because I chopped it down. I can't. <laughs> Ren, how do you deal with that? <laughs> but, how do you uh, deal with that? Um. Well, now. Okay, Red. As of as of now, I kind of hang <clears throat> sections of the plant. I do similar to Eagle, where I put them on hangers, um, but I use the branches to hang the bud instead of using uh, clips or anything. Yep. Um, previously, I used to hang in just a closet, and the closet was in my bedroom, so there was always some humidity in the air, unless it was winter time, and there was little humidity in the air. And I had experienced bud rot. I had experienced uh, some mold and stuff like that. And I would have to cut chunks of bud away, <clears throat> cut flowers off the branch and stuff like that, and salvage what I could. Um, usually that would happen in the summertime. Never had a dehumidifier in that room. Uh, now what I do is I just I dry it in the conditions of like 50 to 60% humidity, the best that I have. <laughs> I have a dehumidifier in my room now. <clears throat> Excuse me. One second here. Okay, there we go. Um, the heat does go up a little bit just because I'm not exhausting the drying right. the, the drying space, so my dehumidifier kicks it up. And that's in the summertime, so I'm I'm at like 80, 80 degrees, seventy to eighty degrees, depending on uh, the day, of course, depending on the humidity of the room or how packed it is. Uh, and then in the winter time, it's a fast dry man because I have little humidity in the air. The plan is to get a humidifier. Get a humidifier in there. Um, keep it away from where I'm drying because the. So what's your I'm target time? What, how long do you like to try to take a lot of your drying? The target you time is 14 days. I'd like to go 10 to 14 days, ideally. I'd like to just, um, I'd like to just maintain a, an environment to where I can almost just rack here, and uh, cut as I cut and trim as I need to go, and jar as I need to go. Um, I'd rather do it that way. Just why I'm trying to keep the room like kind of like a sealed up room. Uh, that way it's more of just like a big giant curing space. 
And then what I can do from there is uh, progressively work at it and buck it down into jars and stuff as I go. I like to, what I do now is I buck it off the branch and it's almost like, it's like partial plant into a, into like a food grade bucket. Yeah. <clears throat> and I say partial plant because I get rid of all of like the main stalk stem, but I keep a lot of like these in there. Like as I'm bucking branches, as I'm bucking buds off the branches, I'll leave the like bigger stems and I'll leave it in the bucket and I'll use it as moisture material. I'll use it as a uh, homogenizing uh, agent that, that I can add to the flower to just kind of keep it whole plant. And then I'll leave, I, I don't do, I don't do any trimming until uh, it's ready for the consumer until it's ready to be consumed by somebody. So like when you say bucket, do you mean like a five gallon bucket with a lid? I mean like a five or a seven gallon bucket with a lid. I've tried totes you and have things this, like that. They don't do seal as well. Right. Do you have <laughs> screw top ones? Uh, I do have screw top ones. Uh, you really need to make sure you got yourself a nice little dead blow hammer or something to be able to get those tops on there. But I typically just use uh, regular old black plastic. Uh, I like the black plastic. The blue plastic tend to be, you got you to gotta get the right type of plastic lid. Dude, those There's one lids flim- from the restaurant industry, man, those are bitch you snap all those on those ones are terrible man yeah those things suck those will break your fingers off i hate those things i like the good old-fashioned i think home depot carries it or it's a, it's a box store lid it's lowe's is like thin and, and it's like rigid and it doesn't seal right there's one that's actually kind of malleable to the bucket <clears throat> i feel like home depot has it or something but it's a black lid that goes along and the black lid i found is great um, but they also have black buckets too. And I like the black bucket also because it helps, you know, the white bucket allows light and things inside the bucket. So I like to keep it as opaque as possible. Uh, and I'm in a dark room, so it doesn't really matter. And use a food grade bucket to be the best. Dude, so I've seen a cool ass video on this one time. So check this out. If you, you're dealing with these buckets that are hard to get with the lids on, I've seen a video where this dude has like an air pump hooked up. And he's got a manifold on it with like 16 airlines that come off of this shit. And each airline goes into one five gallon bucket. And there's a check valve on this shit. And then at the top of the bucket, there is a way for the air to escape. So your buckets are sealed. He's got this pump on a fucking timer for like, it comes on 15 minutes one time a day. And it's just blowing air into from the bottom of this bucket. The valve is at the top. It's just cycling air through there so you don't have to open your fucking five gallon buckets every day. So that's it's pretty awesome. Yeah, see, I actually, um, it, as long as I let it sit in the drying racks long enough, once it goes right. in the bucket, I don't have to burp. You know, you don't burp it or anything. You, that's why I like to rack here. I rack here because then once it goes in the bucket, it's, re- it's set and ready to go. I can leave it in there as long as I want to. Uh, what ends up happening, every time I open that bucket, it dries out a little bit. Once I get it out of that, 60 percent humidity environment and get it into like you know my residence where it's 40 percent humidity in the winter time you know and i crack that bucket every couple days it the weed's crispy after a little bit of time i'd rather just leave all my stuff into a nice so you got to take the jar in the bathroom with you in the morning and when you get out of the shower shower. (laughs) yeah then you just bust the jar open pull fuck what you think you're going to need out then you put the jar back together and you're on your merry way um yeah, a main point I wanted to get at was was I like to do all my trimming right before, uh, like I said, uh, it gets consumed. So, and a big reason that I do that is because it opens up, it reopens up the the flavonoids, and there you start you start breaking into the trichomes, and you you open up that plant material, and it reestablishes a fragrance. Um, I, I like to leave sugar leaf and everything on the plant in the bucket with it as long as possible because that's all part of that full plant cure uh stems and, and all you know like i said all those chunks of stems and what happens is those stems sit between buds so you don't have buds sitting on bud you got buds sitting on stem and they're blocking it from a bud pocket so it all work it works out you know and then every so often you gotta i don't i don't open and burp my buckets but i will shake and flip and rotate my buckets that way all of that inside gets rotate it and what it'll do is it'll it'll kind of trim and you could say it's knocking off trichomes and yes it is knocking off trichomes but then you're getting a hell of a good dry sift product at the end when you get all that, that well so that if you're using out. like a glass jar or something like that like let's say you were using those tall uh, these kinds say you were using one of those right so you know that's what i work out of for the most part and you know over time 
you'll start to see it gets cloudier and cloudier with fucking trikes on there. I don't like so, that. I fucking watch some things. Yo, so oh, Jesus well, Christ. What I do. Thinking you're shit. So what I do is I take a shot of alcohol that, you know, like that I'm going to use for tincture and I'll pour it inside of there and swish it all around and reclaim all of those and pour it back into a cup that I end up using to make the tincture out of. So I'm really being thrifty and and reclaiming everything. And I throw the shit through the washer. I love that idea. (laughs) I'm being 52 skill ball because I'll show you my method. It's just dry. I got a like a little one inch method. I don't have it with me, but I'll brush down that uh, jar into a little, you know, whatever's in the bottom of that jar. And then I'll tap it down into my shot glass and then I'll gently sweep that out. Dude, that smells motherfucker. No. It smells I great. Set of scissors in my jar, and then I rotate my jar around. And uh, scissors knock it all around. Uh, it's trying to break some shit, Red. We gotta but, give uh, you some. We gotta give you some laughs on your show. We can't be serious all the time. You know what I mean? Have either of you used the uh, tried the the brown bag method here that Elliot's talking about? I know I haven't tried to. Uh, try Not a bag, but a, like a box. Either I've done you? a box method. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Cardboard box I'm driving. With some thread. Just hang them on the little. I've, I've heard good things about the hangers with myself, thread. but I haven't tried it. I really so like your idea I'm... to circle the wagons back about going to Walmart. If you can't afford a grow tent, you can at least afford a portable fucking closet. Because it's really, you're just trying to create a micro environment that's easier for you to keep in the parameters that you want to, to encourage drying of the fucking plant. You know what I mean? That's base fucking makes sense. Great dry space. Yeah. yeah. It darkens it. It gives it. They're still yet yeah, still airy. You still always have that option to unzip in the zipper a little bit if it gets right. You can humid. play with it. Yeah. Yeah, man. I mean, that's a great one. I didn't know that. And you could the, you could dry outside. You can dry it successfully there, anywhere on, as long as you have airflow. Oh, sorry to cut you off. Oh uh, no no, it's all good. It's a sesh. <laughs> Dude. No rules here. We're all trying to talk. <laughs> exactly, man. Like in the old days, everybody I knew used to fucking try to be all tobacco drying about it. And they'd be like, throw that shit in the fucking attic. It'll be fucking dry before you know it. You know, and when oh, I was God. really young, I knew somebody that was like, this is when he lived at his grandma's house. So we were definitely, we were not even old enough to drive. Uh, due to throwing some in the fucking microwave. We had found some plant growing in the uh, gorilla pl- look at red red said it dude, real quietly i hope you can hear me. that my That's first plant down. my first plant i wanted to smoke was so bad dude i was cutting branches off that thing 13 three before it was were you 13 at 13 i can i contributed to like you know hey man hey man i was smoking nobody elliot. else was fucking mr elliot here in chat i just want to talk to him real quick i've got fucking uh pizza boxes over my shoulder that i use uh for hash that them are awesome to dry Ash. They're already food grade cardboard. Just easy for storage. Ask if you could have another. I'm gonna split this up with a friend. Can I get another box and ask if you could have another pizza box, nice clean one? And they're already no. food grade. Uh, no. What you do is you go to Gordon's and you just fucking buy them at Gordon's. Oh, can you? Yeah. I never yeah. That. Well, yeah, don't Gordon's, get anything there. Gordon's from here is like two hours away, an hour and a half. Easy. Ah. See, this is that city slicker shit again. You know, I'm like, oh, <laughs> fuck, I just run to Gordon's, man. But my point being, it's a food grade cardboard, so you don't get those little cardboard hairs in there when your hash right. dry down to it. So you can set that aside and then uh, keep your box cracked just a little bit to where them corners are showing. And it keeps everything in covered so you don't get little contaminants that's floating in the air on there. So pizza boxes are ideal. Even if you've, you know, got a, uh, cause a lot of companies now put them, uh, perforated cardboard in there, you know? So if there's a lot yeah. of them are still good after a pizza, yeah, a lot, you know, if it's a good pizza, it isn't super greasy anyway. And which around here, that's the case. So you Dude, can most use kids that work there, you could just fucking slide somebody a $5 bill and they'll give you fucking down of them. Right on. Well, I'm just saying if you're in a pinch, you can uh, take parchment paper and, uh, Put that in the bottom in the box and still, you know, use the pizza box text, you know, but uh, I, I, yeah, I've never tried drying butt in there, but I, 
I have, I do. Same dry, principle. I, the cardboard is going to serve just like the paper bag did. It's going to help to try to pull the moisture out of the bud. You know what I mean? And it's mm -hmm. delicate at least. So I don't know. I mean, it should work. I remember seeing that first time somebody talked about that was like bubble man years ago. And cause he was talking about old hash. And since I have both of you here, let's do a I quick little, lie. let's do a little bro show I'm interview. Talking. Who's got the yeah. oldest hash out of the two of you that you guys have made? What's the oldest hash you have? What's the oldest hash you have, Red? On hand? Yep, I'd that you could get a bowl of. From... I can go upstairs and go grab something from probably 2016, 2015, maybe. Wow. Two... Five no, years. I smoked my shit till it's okay. gone. Okay. Till it's gone. <laughs> till it's fucking pedal to the metal, baby, huh? Hash coma until it's gone, skill ball. What about the, the temple ball? No, there's no people. temple ball crumbs left. Those motherfuckers are gone. I've been choking this one. I went so heavy handed on. I've been like, I, that's why you I heavy keep eating them like every few minutes, man. And I like this thing up and it's killing me. Oh, man. you're smooth. We haven't caught you coughing yet. No. That's because I keep muting the mic because I know it's coming. But yeah. Plus not I, I lit this bitch at eleven thirty. <laughs> I've been nursing this thing since eleven thirty. Dude, I rolled up. I, you know, I like. Oh wait, yes, I lied, Skibbo. That's a fucking lie. Cause I rolled one up when you guys joined in. That's a lie. Well, we've been here by like a half hour or something. I think. Uh, I yeah, yeah fuck like it. I don't know. I seen you were on here still. I, you know, like shit. Hey, I, I told yeah, you on yeah. your episode. Anytime that you want to jump in like that, all you got to do is shoot me a DM. Oh, you know? shit. Look at the Pirates box came out. Oh, hey, oh, matey. Oh, you guys want to... Oh, that's awesome, Red. But you just want... You just inspired me. Oh, hey, matey. Can I take two seconds? I'm going to get off camera. You guys talk for a second. You're fine. I want to... This. I want to compare it with Red's, A. Eh? And but this is it shows off my woodworking skills. Like okay, uh, yeah, I built this one. It's right behind the camera. I built this, this is, uh, for my daughter who moved out and left it with dad because she didn't have ooh, space. That's black red. Say something so the camera picks it up. This is all Death Star hash from that's probably. Your hash box red. Yeah, this, it's, this is hash my, dash. Well, ooh, the sorry, pirate's booty. I can't compare with that. I don't have a big old hash box. <laughs> oh, man. Dude, I need one of those, man. This is from probably 2016, 2017. That's old school. Something like that. That's so what would you? What were you growing back then that that would be from? Death Star. Um, I've been growing Death Star forever, dude. Um, that was the only, that's like the biggest resin producer. Um, is it really? I've been growing Grape Ape, and I've been growing Granddad. I've been growing all these strains for ever. For, most of my, like, let's say, professional career. Um, <clears throat> prior to that, it was bag seed and things like that. But up until, like, maybe the last four or five years, it's been a pretty solid of those, like, four or five strains. Now, have and you noticed any change in it since you've grown it so long? Have you noticed, like, when you changed to Jax, did you uh, notice a change in the finished product or... Have you noticed a change over time? Oh, yeah. That, like, yeah, I noticed a change when I moved to Jax because before I was doing um, GH Flora. Um, so was I. I did that forever, dude. Like until I went organic, I used that shit. It was a better product after I went to Jax. And then, the flavor uh, came. Because like yes. you and Sequence are yes. both getting really good flavor out of the Jax 321 fucking shit, man. Um, when I... I was... I was... Uh, like doing caregiver to caregiver with a couple buddies and i was uh i was giving their product to some of my patients and their products were just phenomenal dude and i had to figure it out and and that were that and they were using like, jacks my mentor's mentor they were using jacks dude yeah and i was like this is how and they were uh coaching my my buddy on how to do it and my best friend was like yeah you got to do it like this so i started using jacks and blew me away man after i ran it the first time i didn't have to mess with my red i didn't have to aerate my res i didn't have to do anything i just mixed two parts i didn't even use mag sulfate you don't even aerate first... your res i don't aerate my res no um, well wait a minute what's you're using a flood and drain system or what uh flood and uh flood and drain drain to waste okay. 
Drain to waste. Um, drain to waste. Okay. Eh, drain to sort of waste. I mop up like five gallons a week out of there, basically out of quick, you know, what is it like a hundred gallon res? Go through about a hundred gallons in a week and I mop out like maybe five to ten gallons in that week. So, you know, yeah, it's about ten percent. That's close five to ten percent waste, I suppose. Um, but like I mean what was I saying about that? It, the flavor. The tape. Was, we were talking about flavors, aren't they? I, so. I wasn't even using magnesium sulfate. I was just using the two parts. I was using the A and the B. And I was like, this is great. I'm loving right. it. And I was just on single Now, what ender. size do you buy it in? Do you buy it in the big-ass bags now? Or yeah. Because you just buy it like once bags. a year. Oh, nice shit. Look who showed up. Fucking talk of the man. Jack Greenstock is fucking in the house. We were talking about you earlier, brother. Oh, fuck yeah. We're so a four-hour and ten-minute fucking cool. session. Thinking I need to burn uh, some of this old ass Death Star black uh, cash. Man. All right, now while I got the money for a second, you guys, I want to. It's time to play a little bit of fucking Eagle Show and Tell. I had to cover up the names to protect the innocent, but uh, I, I I didn't look in the inside, but I believe there's multiple oh, trusts. Beautiful red to show you guys here. Hello. A little bit of my craftsmanship. This first piece, Jack Greenstock. Welcome, brother. Uh, you ready for this? Skill ball? Yeah, man. Just mainly you because uh, we talked about We talked this about shit. this woodwork. Yeah, man. Yeah. You ready? Yeah. Um, this piece was built in 2006 for my daughter, uh, my oldest daughter then. Okay. Uh, my treasure chest for her. I built a beautiful uh, toy box like this for my youngest daughter, who it's round, but this same type of uh, woodworking. This is uh, Brittany's Cheser chest here. Oh shit, that's fucking nice. Fucking handles and everything. I the, I uh, laminated and built these. Uh, I can Hell see. yeah, that's a my tank office. right there. Yeah, that's fantastic. Sign everything. Open that up. Put that on your chair and open it up. I want to see the inside. Ooh, shit. These are all eagle boxes here. You hear this? I found one of these not too long ago filled with some amazing body. It was such a gift. Well, where did okay. you find that from? It was just sitting in the ca I, behind the ca behind the uh, camera. Fucking weed everywhere. What? I took down to fucking veg in. And, you uh, forgot all about it. I looked, I opened the box. I'm like, yeah, I uh, took it to travel with and forgot, you know, set it on the shelf and fucking forgot about it. I'm like, hell yeah, it's fucking primal punch from like my first harvest. It was fucking killer. All right, here's another one. I thought there was another piece in here that uh, you might admire of my woodworking skills. Uh, Check this bad motherfucker out. It's full of stuff here. All right. All this 2018. Is a carved box with inlays that I Damn. fucked around with. See that? The thing looks like it weighs a fucking ton. That's bad. It's full of change. Jesus. Full of change. Oh, man. Yeah, you, you have definitely. That is amazing, dude. Yeah. You know, this is a Look at rose. That beautiful. One. Which is right. actually illegal in the United States to produce and harvest. And these are these are brass inlays, brass and copper inlays. I fucked around with this thing for almost a year. What year is that one from? That's amazing, Eagle. I, I, you got to press the skill ball. Yeah, man. I see you. It's like the fucking workout in the garage. This is a uh, seven skill ball. This is oh, seven. Uh, okay. Okay. So this is a well in my career, but this is when I say I'm, a, you know, capable of some woodworking. This yeah, that is inlay is sweet, man. You know, this is the type of shit that I do in my uh, hobbies and uh, my professional career. Mainly, if you're going to get me to my house, you better. I do some high dollar accounts when I come out with my when I put my dial my bags on. It's usually for some good good shit, and okay. uh, rarely do I get to you know pull out the machinery and make this type of shit anymore but uh mainly it's like fine trim work i'm gonna come put in your you know, like a nice kitchen or possibly some tile but i like uh trim work the fatter the better i like the old shit that uh you know 
trim that's stacked and stacked and stacked. Oh, you yeah. gotta you start out with a, a oh, one yeah. by six or one by eight, and then from there you've got a couple all the way tiers. down. Yeah, you get some OG and everything else in there. Same thing with the fucking crown. I like a nice mm-hmm. box to start it out and then step out with a nice crown, box ceilings. Sure. Yeah, that's I strap on the bags, that's that's what I'm coming for. <laughs> could do some nice shit with some fucking wainscoting. I've made some absolutely beautiful tables. Uh, uh, my my personal table, my last name starts with an H, is uh, Brazilian cherry with oak inlays with an oak border around it. It's a really? five by five table and it has a giant H, Brazilian cherry H that's super dark. It doesn't match the Brazilian that's in there. It's already two toned. It's well aged, and it is fucking beautiful. Where'd you get? Where'd you source that from? Materials from the Mott dumpster. Damn, that's crazy. You fucking told us that story before about how they were like, okay, yeah, okay. and then uh, you know, same thing with the you know that's the way they rolled though. Yeah, that's the materials. Yeah, and back in the day. The budget I had with the mods. You know, everything that they had was, I, this is no lie. And this was so fucking, fu- this was the fostering, this is the fostering of working with people with money. And I'm not fucking knocking, if you got money, not knocking you, whatever. More power to you. Love you. But uh, super money can do this. <laughs> Right. You can spend, I spent on, in the Hardy Mott Foundation, I spent four months in the head guy's office doing this room, floor, everything, the walls were all paneled. We had a ceiling just like I'm talking about. It was all kind of the false beams with the crown in between. Yep. Ornate shit. All, all Brazilian cherry, Okay. Beautiful, custom ordered, had to wait for the shit. That's beautiful, right? I'm so jealous. I know. They come in from vacation, room set for two months. They come in and look at it, they're like, you know, it is so beautiful. I love this. But can we figure this all out and do it in walnut? Sure. That's all free wood for you. Yeah. Yeah. So I out of the dumpster picked the nails out. Mm-hmm. So Hell sad. Yeah, I would too. But that's hard but, though when you put your heart and soul into something like that. You know what I mean? Well, it's that heartbreaking. Part. Yeah. It's heartbreaking. It was totally heartbreaking. And then I got that a lot, you know, as their personal carpenter for years and years. Because a lot of times they would be gone. They'd cut you off a project. Here, go build me an addition or here, I bought it in a guest house on the edge of my property. Restore this right quick. And, oh, yeah. Uh, by the way, we'll be back in six months. And they come back six months, and you've already done knocked it out. And they're like, yeah, this is great, but uh, I want this changed. Uh, can we do this? Can we do that? Can we, uh, yes. <laughs> yeah. Well, like you're going to say no. Right. So that's a little, I guess. I, way off there that's a little eagle uh show and tell <laughs> speaking of show and tell red let's see what that's uh what you're working with again because we'll you definitely here. have some hash appreciators in the chat i, I broke it I, i'd already broke it apart and was kind of playing with it but this is it Oops. i pre always appreciate some good hash and uh I wish I had your patience to save it, though, Rod. Yeah, man. I mean, <laughs> yeah, man. <laughs> just, just put it off to the side, and I'm always smoking on other stuff. And I usually got a couple different strains laying around. And the Death Star is just such a good resin producer. I mean, how, how is the Grand Eight Perp? Stupid. How much resin it produces? Each one of these blobs is like me sitting down trimming for a little while. <clears throat> Is like basically one trim session. Each one of these blobs is one trim session. Off of so that's all scissor hash. All this is all finger hash. Yeah, I don't. Yeah. I don't. I, uh, the stuff on the scissors usually goes into the trim. The stuff on the on the gloves will get collected and rolled into a temple ball. Love it. Oh man, those are so cool. 
Uh, shout out to Dank Duchess. I watched her video on rolling a temple ball. When I Red, I know you've done them out. too, and so has Eagle, right? You guys have both done fucking huge yeah. ones. Yeah, I love them temple balls. That's them are great that's, for long term storage, dude. That's basically what they, I mean. These things are all. Some of these are like yeah, like when you break machine. those open, they're different colored on the inside. They are, they're not yeah, dark the inside. Like the inside was a little oxidization. Bit more, uh, yeah, the, yeah, the outside is totally black with oxidization. Some of them are like sheeny. Yeah, those they're are actually, fucking like, sweet. It's like sealed like wax. You know? They almost look like from a distance, like a coffee bean, like dark and oily. Right. You know what I mean? Totally. Oh, yeah. And this Death Star is really oily. I mean, these most of the hash that's sitting in this uh, thing inside of here, that a lot of the resin is dry. You know, it kind of dries up. Some of the indica resin and stuff really dries I up. I can play like show and tell. Which... You can? Okay. Like Play Doh right now. What you got there, Eagle? Is that a holy cannoli? Holy cow. Thing. No, this is uh, some of that fresh froze that I uh, just let oxidize and sit around to because I didn't get the chance to make that uh, hash paper. There was no sense in making it if I wasn't going to make it to the hash bash. But you can see this is still, uh, you know, the temple ball way of thinking when, uh, like Red saying, you know, this stuff might look. You could literally just start pushing all that in with your ball right now. But it, oh, this one is a little darker. Um, but some of this, you know, you break it up. This is, looks like peanut butter on the inside. Yeah. Still, yeah. It's still good ass. Yeah. Elliot is saying I in the chat, this is my hash slogan is, I had more yesterday. <laughs> Same there. And it's still that nice lighter color in the middle. Yeah. Drop shot. We will meet up for a hash bash someday soon. That would be there awesome. you go. Some kind of event. Yeah. Okay, now let's get back to the he temple ball hat thing here. Uh, yeah, so could you take all of those pieces in your hand right now, warm them all up, and make one big fucking ball out of them? What I would do is I would do. Uh, th I wanted to show this is uh, this is after temple ball tech here. Okay, you keep this That's right. It's a grater. Yeah, yeah, it's cheese grater. I got this at wall. Oh, look, there you go, skill ball. What's that say? Fuck, I'm old and blind. What does it say? Gordon Food Center. There you go, a little <laughs> GFS action. Nice. So, yeah, that's where I got this. And you keep this right next to your tray. In your temple ball, it doesn't need storage. Let me get this off my That's so track. fucking smart, dude. Yeah, I didn't know that. So you keep this in your you know, temple ball. You temple ball it for long-term storage. Yeah, I thought you would just break a piece off and then like try to flatten it out, you know? And then you just... Right in your fucking tray there, and it makes a nice shred. And then you just... This I showed this and read this the other night when I rolled this fatty. But same thing, you know, you just you line your, put a little bit in here, and then you sprinkle that shit in there, and then you pack some more on top of that, and then you just fucking fling it just one that's time. That's a beast <laughs> of a fucking roller, man. And then fucking, uh, yeah, that's an excellent hash joint right there. But as far as what you were asking, now let's reverse back a little bit. I want to make, I want to fucking... I'm not worried about hitting my uh, dab in this, okay, because I'm not worried about it being full mill. So I'm sure if I threw this on a nice hot uh, rig that I bet you it would dab still pretty nicely. It might leave a little ash, but I'm sure it would be 90% melty. So I want to turn this into a temple ball. I keep getting sidetracked. I'm going to dump this into a plastic baggie, and I'm going to heat up that. I'm going to do the Frenchie tech to this i'm gonna roll it out with a uh, hot water bottle as much as i can it ain't gonna make it one the first time now i'm gonna throw that baggie into the freezer dude i gotta I'm find a bottle it. man that's I'm the whole thing bag. is you gotta find the good bottle yeah and that's you you just said it yourself and when you're looking for your bottle this is your tip brother make sure it's good and flat because most flat bottles sided. have the little roll on them you know what i mean mm -hmm. There's That's what's going to fuck you up. And yeah, it doesn't help, you know, and you can't flatten perfectly with that. If it's chunky, yeah, but you get to a point where you, you know, it's working against you. So when you're looking for your bottle, make sure it's as smooth as possible. All right, you did your first roll. Now you're going to throw that back in. I ain't on it, so roll it back up a couple more times until you get it to the consistency where it's binded together pretty well, okay? 
and it, the, the color is pretty consistent as well. That's what I'm looking for. I want, because like we just said, these chunks are different colors right now. And as you press it out, it'll look weird. You'll see that light brown, dark brown. And as you press it out with the, with the bottle, you watch it oxidize and turn to brown and smooth out. And you can actually eat it at that point. You know what I mean? Because the bottle's usually well over 165, and it is decarbonate. Uh, damn, cotton mouth. Decarbonate. My part about temple Let me say hash. It, for my cotton mouth. <laughs> it is decarboxylating it, and so it does make it psychoactive and somewhat edible. But it should be greasy looking, and it should be a consistent color. So once it, you got it to that point and it's still hot and malleable, you fold it up in one more time. And now you smack your uh, gloves on, nice clean gloves, and you just put that in your hand like you're rolling up a putty ball and just ooh, keep it going, keep it going, keep it going. You know, hopefully you're What's the biggest one you've made before? 56 grams. Fucking hopefully Jesus. you're spinning it fast enough just like this. To where you almost got, I can feel it right now, that Indian right. burn. You know what I mean? That Mr. Miyagi. Yeah, you're fucking, what you're doing is, because when you press it in on itself, you know, you've still got them layers. You know what I mean? You still, so now you're pressing it. And as you're doing that also, you're pushing as hard as you fucking can. Just bond it all together. But yet you're holding, you know, that spin, you're wanting to smooth out all those wrinkles on the outside to get it just as, smooth as you can with the keeping it malleable with the heat of your hands so once you've got it you know once i've got all the lines out of my balls i can no longer tell it's i don't want the lines in my balls man i want them to be smooth wrinkle free wrinkly and nasty god damn i want them smooth and pretty like my head <laughs> 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 you know, once I get them all smooth and like dab that, time. Then... <laughs> if anybody's dabbing out there, that's your cue. <laughs> I fucking once I get them all smoothed out, I'm done with my temple ball. Now your storage and it would actually age as well. You can keep it like that for years, years. Yeah. And actually, the longer you keep it, the more pronounced terps will come back in it, and uh, it actually gets better and better as the time goes on. Yeah, that's crazy. I know I've seen. Uh... I can't remember what uh, Bubble Man's was. His was several years old that he was breaking into. So it's cool to see that Red has some really old shit too. Dude, I'm I'm half tempted to. You need to get that hookah working again, bro. That's what you need to do. Yeah, yeah. This hookah is really nasty. I actually got a nice new little hookah over here that I have been using every now and then. Bust it out, man. This stuff, I think I'm going to press and like homogenize a couple of these pucks into a couple of temple balls. Um, get nothing but time, you know what I mean? It's like, like that's what I mean. I mean, this stuff's what a cool like thing to like for old. anxiety and shit. Like, if you have anxiety, the rhythmic thing of making a fucking temple ball can give you something to concentrate on. You know what I'm saying? Look at that beast. So, I got this little guy here that I puff on. So I got dry sift and a bunch of hash inside here right now. But you like it. What's I'm that? such an impatient yeah. fucker. Second day out of the herb dryer. On it. I haven't been able to breathe for like for two weeks in a day, so 15 days. Smoke this, I can breathe more. excellent right now. I don't want to curse myself, you know what I mean? But like, do this Death Star hash. <clears throat> just made just... room for that button, or, you know. Help make room for the butt in the herb dryer. That's what I'm doing. There you yeah, go. Yeah, yeah. I'm not yeah. being greedy and trying to get it there early. No, I'm you're doing make- science, early testing, brother. You have to figure out what this plant is going through and its metamorphosis from harvest to basically lighter. So you taking yes. it at different points is all for data points. Yes, science. Science. Science, bitches. Science. Fire in the hole. What do you think, Red? I think that this Death Star is what I should have been smoking. I've, I've hardly been smoking, man. I've been taking like a couple hits every right. few hours right, where I'm what? usually smoking like four God joints it, with my coffee. And I should have been smoking this Death Star for like the last two weeks, man, because I can breathe right now. I haven't been able to breathe for two weeks. My anxiety has been so crazy. Dude, I'm going to fucking do this. 
and I'm sitting here smoking this whole thing, and I'm ripped. What you got? You guys gonna Dude, smoke some hash? Does oh, anybody bro. remember these old ass fucking pipes? It's an old ass steamroller, man. I've had this motherfucker. This That's is sweet. like, this is the oldest pipe that I have. I was gonna okay. say I got I got a I got one sitting right here, Scobo. Okay, yes. I fucking I just, dude, you can just blow your head off with these things. So what I'm gonna yeah. do is I'm gonna join you with the little bit of Death Star hash I have left. Um I think what I'll smoke is I have <clears throat> in the grinder right now. I know I have some <laughs> Keweenaw copper still. Oh my god, that's fucking hilarious. What? I just fucking uh I just realized the uh, off camera I've been lighting stash. my uh my uh joint with the smaller camera or uh, with this fucking torch. This torch right here. And uh I just realized because this is you know it's only day two, this is barely smokable. That I'm gonna have to fucking probably smokeable. chief on chief on it a little bit while i'm trying to get her going so i'm gonna oh, yeah. be like trailer park ricky in this bitch wanting to get her going yeah. with the torch yeah we've been there too brother we ain't gonna fuck with you <laughs> here look i'm just using it as my packer sometimes you'll see me fucking using a packer on camera and you're like what the fuck is that thing so it's here good, dude. it's extra it's fucking awesome. late at night but you no, know, also I want to show you this. He this made that up. For you guys over there at the Michigan Bros Grower Show. This is my travel tray. Look at there. Who's yeah, on that's the what we. Yeah, that's the fucking one you took to uh, our last session we had. Look yeah. yeah. To pimp you guys out to everybody. Eagle, this this is fucking uh, reminded me of fucking hanging out back then. Just good fucking conversation, laughs. Ooh, I wish I could get the fucking camera to focus on this big fucking chunk. It probably won't, but we'll see. We'll see I that. almost feel high school high right now, dude. Papa, can you see me? Oh, yeah. Okay. I'm going to uh, gonna be on the record. I actually seen somebody in chat that referred to the chat as shit talkers. I, I don't know how I'm feeling about that. <laughs> Welcome, shit talkers. There you go. Even Welcome though that's the name talkers. of the show. I'm, I'm the shit talker here. <laughs> not the not the chat. The shit talkers. That's funny. Yeah. Talking shit with Eagle. I like the title myself. I can dig it, dude. There it goes, Red. Well, you know, this is a funny, yeah. I told this, I can't remember, I think me and Sequence, or was it me and you? It was me. Okay. Can you appreciate that? No. Yeah. Yeah, I can. Yeah, I can appreciate that. Um, I actually had a sponsor that I reached out and wanted to get on the show. And initially, they've since changed their mind. They're going to come up. But they initially said, no, I can't be on a show with swears in the title. I deal with a lot of people in the, in, and sell lights there. I can't have them uh, looking me up and seeing me on a shit a show that says talking, fucking talking shit. I went, okay, I get it, but I don't get it. I said, <laughs> You know, they, you're you're reaching your clientele, I would think. You know what I mean? And, uh, well, I'm not, I said, well, maybe I see your point and maybe at a later date we can film a recorded episode and call it something else. But I'm not changing the title. He wanted me to change the title of the show so he could be on. And I said, nope. I mean, it's an executive decision. He's making one, you're making one. You know, hey, you know, what's but funny. the thing is, from a business standpoint, if if I am a if I'm a potential consumer and you and I have similarities and I'm watching this show, obviously you're trying to sell to the cannabis community. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, who's your demographic? Well, I think I'm calling out my audience, basically, ah, you know. If, that, if the, the swears in the title offend you, then 
this isn't your program. Just like, you know, the people that we went over, one of us went over this as well. If the 10 tattoos on my body offend you without you looking into the cover of the book, well, don't read, you know, don't read a book by its cover, you know, so see, sorry, sorry, you made that decision and uh, move on. Hey, do, wait, I, you're also probably that person that will, you know, after your friends come to you and tell you how great something is, you'll jump on board. But uh, I hate to be that person. And what, you know how I handled it? This is exactly how I handled it. And I kind of, uh, I, I get it to some point, but I, you know, I don't think in the same aspect, Skillbo, if he's the same people that are worrying about him uh, or being, you know, the title of the show, him being on there, I don't believe they're going to click on it or find it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, that's the sequence thing. Yeah. It, that's the way I see it. And the other way I handled it is because I reached out to a lot of uh, people lately to be on the show and uh, very respectable people. And they said yes. And I sent them a copy of those yeses to him. Just and I, I didn't say no text at all. He got the point. Red. If these pe respectable gentlemen can be on this show and not phase them, then you should be able to overlook it as well. And he, he got the point. He, he agreed. I could be on your show. We could work this out. My so, mom and dad watched the show the other night. They, did they? They look yeah, yeah, they, they looked did past too. The, they yeah. looked past that title for sure, man. Yeah, you had a 71-year-old watching. Yeah, my that's dad's awesome. 72. Well, the our viewer that watches both of our show, the Denise, she's an older lady, and she's funny as hell. She's always been, I always commented on my tattoos since you know, way before, way before anybody in the group know me. She's uh, honestly yeah. been following along for like eight years. I've known her from Mass Roots. She's drop shot was saying that he's fucking been smoking for 47 years, so this is another old ripper. But there's nothing wrong. That's the one great thing about the cannabis plan is that we all bond on the same level. Yeah, it's 86. He'll be 62. Shout out. He's older than we are. Red, I was yelling for you a minute ago because this fucking Death Star hash is like a horse hoof to the head, man. So You like that? Ooh, yeah, get it gets you. Did it just take the angst away? Make you feel better? Yeah, it just kicked me right in the fucking head. In a good way, I hope. It's hash. It's always a good way. Always a good way. Yeah, dude. Eagle. No, I, I, I dig the show, man. I dig the concept. I dig, uh, you know, the title, everything. Dude, it's our show. It's just a different channel. It's different There's channel, no man. difference. You wouldn't know if you wouldn't know in a week's time if we do a crossover episode, which show you're watching, because. It's not a show. There's no fucking theme to this shit. It's just us. So well, it, it, it is like what it is back. every time because we are who we are. Yeah, I, li I like the laid back atmosphere of it. For a relaxed conversation in my eyes. You know what I mean? A casual. It's a slang term for a casual conversation. Right. We just chose right. to call ours the late sesh. That's the only difference. Yep. No difference. And I guess by putting the, the fucking and the shit in there, it just invites it to be, you know, a little more adult, a little extra. You know. Here's here's what I'll say on that is if I you like want to change the name of it, then you should change the name of it. But if you don't want to change the name of it, then don't change the name of it. But if it comes and, to a point and, where you're like, you know what, I really wish I could change the name of it, but I really can't now because I've talked about it so early on in these other episodes. And if I do change my name, people are going to think I'm some kind of fucking flim flam artist. So now oh, I'm stuck with it. this shit. Oh, no. You know what? Oh, I'm, That's putting way no. too much thought into shit. Fuck it. This is your show. It's going to be what it is. And we're going to watch. Yeah, That's all man, I don't mind. Everything about the Red Setter Farm business model is all 21 and over anyway. So I don't mind. I dig it. I'm not changing. The only way that I'll change the name is if uh, YouTube sends me something yeah. and says, yeah, you ain't going live anymore with that title. Dude, did you and see what Jack said? Jack says earlier when I clicked on Eagle's cam was off and I thought the label was off. I thought it was the late sesh. See? Zach. <laughs> nice. Baby, come back. 
fucking uh I had a UK viewer uh actually uh god damn it it's 13 I can't think of it right now something 13 I'm sorry I know you'll watch this but he's a UK viewer and he's telling okay, me that uh it goes in and out it will play for a little while and then it will disappear and then it'll come back and I think it's from like uh the music I'm playing uh, like a copyright type thing. Like certain songs are goofy in certain countries, and I think I, it's triggering them. And, but either way, I was like, UK? Wow, we got some UK here too. But fuck well, it I always told, when I talk about the cannabis community, I don't limit us to just like, you know, like there's the sesh that you're having. This is our little, you know, three way cannabis community. And then there's the people in the chat. So that's like another ring. And then there's like the fact that you say, well, okay, so we're all happen to be in Michigan or we all are doing this on YouTube or whatever. But you realize, you know, like sequence and I do because of the podcast and the metrics that you can follow. We have had since the beginning, we've had listeners in Hong Kong. We've had listeners in the UK. We've had listeners in Germany and France um, all over the place. And I'm not going to sit here and try to rattle off names. It was surprising the number of, and it wasn't just like one person. Sometimes it would be three or four so uh the the plant has a way of bringing everybody together and it's really cool to just be kind of a conduit you know where you know there's the conversation we're having but then there's the people that are having the conversation in a chat so being a part of that cannabis conduit cannabis community very That's good another. hash very good fucking smoke we get like some uh we get to a lot of viewers from Canada too, man. The other night on one of the shows, we had like four people from Canada in the chat. And that's a uh, that's what I like about the late show. Right on. Uh, I did think it was you. I like the uh lives because we can bring the chat into this. I like bringing them in, you know. Sometimes I've cut off a few guests just so I could uh, say something to them. But uh they're just as big as part of this in particular show is we are i like to think because i'm watching that chat and fucking just like you guys and shit are i think it just it it makes everybody feel more welcome when you bring them into it yeah man <clears throat> hey shout out drop shot he said he's a retired tennis pro i think that's what he's talking about i played tennis in high school shout out to that <laughs> and i say yeah I encourage you guys, you see anything that triggers your eye that you want to say to them, <clears throat> sprout that shit out. Yeah. Oh. I was amazed Jack jumped in last night. <clears throat> Cannabis Badass jumped in and helped me bail out uh, that fumbling episode last night. Oh, gee. Yeah, dude, I haven't gotten a chance to listen to it. I was going to wait till I jumped in the garden because that's a nice long one. And well, I you're salty like, because it's longer than your episode, so like, you got like triggered yeah, because hit, of it. Tell Jack about it. I gotta it. hit 420. I gotta hit 420, Jack. You know what? It's funny you was, said I that. I was going for the marathon. I looked at the time and I was like, rats! Just a little bit longer! <laughs> it's awesome, dude. I love it. It's so good. <laughs> I don't know if I'm gonna be able to top it, man. That's great. I'm really excited to dig into it. I caught, I caught like a few minutes of it, and I was like, "All right, I gotta wait until I'm like diving deep into the garden for this one." I'm I excited. love it. Man. That's the one thing about guy. this whole fucking, you know, everybody's got more time in their hands thing now is we're getting a lot of people to hang tighter in these chats and shit. People are bored, and it, I don't know. There's just like everybody's crossing over on everything, and I, it's really just. We're still hanging out with each other because we're like, damn, we can't fucking get together and smoke for real. So I guess that's what it's going to be, man. Yeah. Shout out to the growing with my fellow man. growers. Jack Greenstock's yeah. been on there. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, Shane and the whole awesome. gang over there. Absolutely. Man, I'm a little bummed because this is still that, like, get a little terpy taste off it, not much, but you still taste it as, like, wet as fuck. Oh, Tastes dude, it gives you a headache after a while. If you really get on it and have to hit it too hard, you're like, ah. That's where it's at right now, where that point where, like, yeah. it won't go out itself. If I set it down. So gonna... what you got to do is you got to grind that shit up and then spread it out on, like, a notebook paper and then leave it alone for, like, 20 minutes and fucking hope that the paper pulls out some of the extra moisture from the 
the ground and then try to see what happens. She's a trooper. She won't go out. <laughs> Holy shit, Drops said, said y'all should have back-to-back shows on 420 like 9 to 9 a.m. all night in her. A full That's marathon. a good idea, 420. That's a good idea, Drop. <coughs> that is a good idea. Michigan Bro Show fucking marathon on 420. Yeah, because fucking who else are you going to smoke with? Just <laughs> I'll hang out and eat some hash, man. Even if they were pre-aired episodes where we just hung out and chat all fucking day, shooting chat, you know, with everybody. Epic four twenty smokes. Yeah, dude, I'm so fucking hungry. I'm gonna smoke this, finish my beer, and shuffle off, man. John boy, what's up, man? Late joining. We see you. Hell yeah! Thank you. I can hardly keep my eyes open. I'm kind of like on that red setter fucking thing. Woo. Now I see why. Death Star? Yeah, dude. I'm fried right now. <clears throat> Death Star's great. Well, I mixed it with that Q on a copper, hole. so it's like fucking super knockout, man. I've hardly smoked you see the, in the last color couple weeks. Like a tolerance break. Yeah, that shit's fucking like. What the hell is that? That's Cuban on, dude. That's the Cuban on copper. That's what it grinds up like. Little chunk. No, no, no. The, this tolerance break red speaks. Up. Oh. Oh, uh, because I've only Shit. been hitting. On, I've only been hitting my my weed like once every few hours. I haven't been smoking a bunch of doobies in the morning with my coffee, getting ready to go. And How's that going over? Rough, man. It's been a wild couple. Of, <laughs> a wild couple it's weeks. rough. Usually really red rough. and I just sit up all morning and just. Do this, that. I'm breathing great right now, man. I'm feeling good. It's 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 been anxiety. It's been a crazy, like, <clears throat> anxious couple weeks. It's a wild ride. So it seemed like a tolerance break when I sit down and actually smoke a bowl. I haven't had. I think I a tolerance break actually. is like taking more than like a day off or something. That's, yeah, you'd think. I would. Well, no, I think it would have to be longer than that, wouldn't it? I don't know. I feel I feel pretty damn good right now. That's for sure. I John Boy said he quit coffee about seven months ago. Good morning. Dang man, that is awesome. I quit coffee a year ago. Really? I quit coffee. No, hold on. <laughs> Why are you Only so speedy? <laughs> Only for a couple of months. I quit oh, coffee there we go. <laughs> I went back to coffee. Baby, come back. Like, eh, that was all right. I've it's never, I've been terribly... sleep as a tolerance break. That's right, Jack. Sleep tolerance break. Terribly addicted to coffee since like the eighth grade. And the energy drinks were like a uh, small bene- trying to get away because the coffee wasn't working anymore unless I drank fresh French press. So I was drinking energy drinks, trying to recoup. My dad, who has since passed on, always told me because he was a caffeine drinker like that too. And he tried to uh, quit. Uh, like the last five years before he passed. And he always told me he had more energy after quitting the coffee than he did have drinking it. But I never... But he swore by it. He swore giving it up, he had more energy. I'm anxious to see how that works out for you, right? No, honestly, I did. I felt a lot better when I wasn't drinking coffee every day. I was drinking like more teas and like kind of like what I've been doing this past week since I've been so anxious. I haven't really been drinking much coffee. I'll drink like a few sips in the morning until it makes me feel worse. And then I stopped drinking the coffee. Last few days have been all right. So I've had a little bit more coffee, right? So I don't know. But anyways, like, yeah, man, um, I feel like I crashed pretty hard midday. I get pretty pretty tired, but I, I'll usually smoke sativas all day. That's like what really uh, made most of my breathing worse, man. I smoked some sour diesel the other night, and I was like, oh, my God, I'm going to die. I can't breathe for die. like four hours, dude. It was terrible. <laughs> it, was, it boosted my anxiety so high. I was like having a good night, and I was like, you know what? I'm going to smoke some sour diesel. I'm feeling pretty good. I'm going to get some – I'm going to get heady, man. I haven't had a good head high in like a few days. So. Is that what diesel does to you? Yeah, well, everything like 
most of the stuff I smoke is like rocket fuel, man. It's go, go, go. And, and like, I rarely ever smoke like granddaddy or great. I, I rarely smoke that stuff as much as I really enjoy it. I'll smoke it late at night when I really need to go to bed. Cause otherwise I'm smoking F13. I'm smoking, um, I'm not smoking blueberry or anything like that. I'm not Apollo, smoking anything that's Apollo's gonna make gone now. I'm smoking Apollo. Uh, or when I had dementia, I'm smoking dement. I'm smoking whatever sativa I have. I always have a sativa on deck. That's why I had Death Star always on deck. Death Star is like my medicine. That's probably because that's I'm your good to... mood shit, right? It's my good mood shit, yeah. And I just yeah. haven't had it for so long, and I realized this last couple weeks I've been kind of nervous to smoke it because it is so stimulating. But it's, I don't think it's a what the yeah, screen stuff, stuff got me fucking good. cracking up. I'm fucking, I agree 100%. My closest thing to a tolerance break for me has ever been a long day of work on a job I couldn't fucking smoke at and or sleep. I agree 100%, Jack. Fucking other than that, I don't think I've ever took a tolerance break. I it. haven't either. Ever. Even when I went to a red state, dude, I fucking didn't take a tolerance break. I fucking just hit somebody up like, hey, dude, you know when I come to town, I really need to fucking have something, so. It's been They're a like, while. Oh, how much do you want? Like a uh, half ounce. That's a like, holy shit. How long are you going to be here? A couple days. A couple of years ago, I went down to Florida with my old man. And well, we drove to Florida. So there was that long drive. And then we stayed at my uncle's place for a day, I think. And then my cousin got married. So I hung out with my cousin. And I finally got the blaze one. But it was like a day and a half, two days, I think. I think I hit a vape pen before I got the blaze with my cousin. I think I went out and hit a vape pen from some other family members. Did you get high as shit? Yeah, I got high as shit, dude. I hit yeah. that vape pen like once or twice. She's like, I hit it once. She's like, no, you can hit it a couple times. I'm like, oh, sweet. Thank you. I hit that thing like four or five times. It was great. I got ripped. And then finally got to smoke a blunt with my cousin, which was pretty fucking cool. He got married, smoked a couple more blunts, went home. You were so all that, was like another, that was like another 18-hour tolerance break on the way home, but. I didn't take no edibles or anything with me. You know, we were driving down. My dad didn't want me to take anything. And I was like, you know, what? I respect that. We're, we're going through some red states and don't want to get you in trouble. So didn't. I've traveled with Tinkshire for sure. Well, I've traveled with Bud. The only time I didn't travel with Bud, I was down to Florida one time. <laughs> it's always Florida. I ain't fucking around in Florida. And I, when I got down there with some commercial bullshit, I was like, <laughs> "Some boof." I thought this is where it came in. <laughs> yeah, in, the in a bail off of a boat. Where's that Miami Vice weed and shit? <laughs> shit, that's thirty-five years ago back there on the set. <laughs> Crockett and Sonny. That oh no, it's Sonny Crockett. What was that dude's name? It was Tubbs. Tubbs and Crockett. That was some fun shit. Oh, fuck. Yeah, it's been a good day. How was your guys' day? What'd you guys do today? Got high, fell asleep. Woke up, got high, fell asleep. Overslept, got high, felt bad about it. Just been high. Said all day. Nothing. I trimmed up the last one. Not that day. nice. It's just like a fucking lost day, man. Just <sighs> don't smoke too much these days, man. There is fucking. You still have to be semi-productive. Yeah. <clears throat> I've been trying yeah, to get in the garden, man. It's been tough because the garden. It's like a warm environment, and like not being able to breathe and trying to go in those warm environments. I haven't been able to like get a lot of work. Ooh, done. that sucks. It's really rough. It really sucks. <clears throat> especially going out in like my sealed rooms to go hang out my go hang out in your sealed rooms for a couple of hours when you can't breathe <laughs> it's really tough did you see what two is like you know thousand ppm and all you need is like more oxygen it really doesn't work but i get got it done the best i could you know so now i'm hopefully gonna get back at it and i'm gonna keep this shit in mind because a lot of it could have to do with our conversation and us hanging out too you know could be more mind over matter but the Death Star is helping a lot more than some of the other shit. Man, I smoked some of that Girls Gone Wild hash earlier. Speaking of what'd you do today, smoked some Girls Gone Wild hash that I know what the terpene profile is. It's mostly myrcene with a splash of pinene, something else. 
and that was like a rocket ship today, dude. I, I was on too my much, way too much. Yeah, it was way too much. But normally, I normally that's my wake and bake. You know, it's really weird right now. It's weird how anxiety works because normally all this shit is, everything's right. like the complete reverse for me right now. Yeah. Normally, I'm, I'm I need a lot of coffee. I need a handful of sativas to get me going and get me in the garden, rock and roll throughout my day. And it's complete. What about your uh, hemp bud that you have? The rosaberry or like that shit hemp oh like the hemp stuff the hemp, my outdoor was seeded outdoor yeah do you I have any attempt, of that I, I do man it's all seeded up and i haven't so even what? attempted to i know no i not so what i just haven't even thought about it. yeah Actually, man. i did think Fucking about that the other day and i was dig like in there. I dig into that yeah. and i was like ah, that might be pining too it might hit me in my ass you're only gonna know when you break it open with your nose you'll either be right or wrong and you can either push yeah, that one back right. um you know i think i'm going to that's not a bad idea and I need to break the seeds out of it anyway because I want to get some cover crop. started. Yeah, well, it's all it's all CBD. There's like no THC in it or anything, so I'm just gonna cover crop with it and pull and chop and drop and stuff. And what? Uh, He's so yeah. gonna cover crop with it. No, there's a ton of volunteer already out there. It's so funny. so much volunteer bud. So much like um, all the moldy bud and everything. It was all seeded up. It all went right back into the compost, and it's all spread. Yeah, there's little sprouts everywhere. <clears throat> that's so great it's, it's fun dude yeah i love just having plants that you don't really have to worry about managing or anything like the rest of it it's all going to turn into medicine once i buck the seeds sure. out of it that's all that's going to be like tincture tincture um yeah. flower you know perfect for it perfect you know i was looking it. at you guys were talking about rso and one thing that i was looking at was they have these like magnetic stirs has anyone ever heard of a magnetic stir Talking about the little heated ones, got a little heat plate. Yeah, in the it looks like a science yeah. thing. So it's like a, there's like a little hot plate thing, and then you put like your beaker on top. So at this point, you would pour your tincture in, and you put like it looks like a like a capsule. It's a magnetic thing you drop in, and then using the heat plate thing, it just spins it. You can set how many revolutions. Yeah, see, John Boys knows what they are. So I was thinking. Wouldn't couldn't that be a really s- semi-efficient, safe way to reduce the tincture? Because you don't want to do it over like an open flame or anything. Now I could also use the hot plate double boiler method to do it, but I don't know. The other one was kind of attractive from like a science nerdy kind of way. I think that so. I think that I would do hot plate double boiler method until it got a little more viscous. And then once it got viscous enough, I'd toss in the, the little rod and let it spin. Spin it and out. Then, try uh, to get it. Spin it out. The way you want it. Because you can you get know, them on they, Amazon for like 60 bucks, dude. Yeah, I remember that from watching um, Rick's fucking videos. The early ones. But I need to go back through it and watch a lot more content on it. And then once it's like glass... one. Once it's like to the point where it's sheened over, you can kind of put it in the oven and finish out the process at I think like 270 degrees w- with without a stirring mechanism or anything. And no vacuum. That's just heat, right? Yeah, just heat. And once it's completely glassed over, no bubbles, nothing. It's done, and then you could put it back into the stirring mechanism while you uh, draw it into your syringes. That way. It, keeps it mixed up or else you could let it sit and cool a little bit and you'll separate your fats and oils will just kind of stay on the bottom or your waxes your waxes lipids and waxes yeah yeah they'll stay on the bottom and and if you tilt it right you can balance it out get all your nice creamy rso off the top and then you know do whatever you want with the waxes and lipids i've I've often thought of like making candles and shit out of them it's real wax maybe real wax yeah like I've actually like molded it and shit. It's really cool. Well, it's what you could do fuck. with that is you could take some of your tincture that you had left over or some of the extract and you could make like a tiger balm out of that, which calls for something like beeswax as a thickening agent. So that could yeah, be interesting totally. to do too. Absolutely. So I think that's just like fucking petroleum jelly and fucking some essential oils and slap you on the ass and away you go here, throw some fucking beeswax on it. I think I watch all kinds of stupid videos on shit like that because, you know, like I'm not just a grower, but as like a tincturing person, I'm always trying to think of like 
how this shit all works together. And then there's like tincturing other things. Like I was looking into um, turmeric. Like if you made a tincture out of turmeric, it's really, really good for inflammation. And then you have to look at like what the contraindications are for. Like you shouldn't use it if you're pregnant or breastfeeding or whatever. But um, I just try to do like a natural approach to trying to help myself. So always try to learn some more shit. And by being on Talking Shit with Eagle, I'm learning so much more just listening to Red and Eagle regale me with stories on tech. There's a cheap plug for you. Thank you. I wish I actually took sound bites and we could do commercials. Did you totally can, yeah. Yeah, because you download this as an MP3 and then you could just cut out whatever you wanted or whatever from it. You know, Red, I want to take this time and apologize. I forgot to hit record on our fucking great marathon the other night. So I got to figure out a way to try to get it back from YouTube. It's down. You can get it. You can yeah. save videos off of YouTube. Well, then uh, I, you can't. I don't know if I can take it for processing from there. So I've got videos I've done that with. In fact, I've got the original episode of me that you sent me the link of. I yeah. downloaded it like that, but I don't think I can open it up and uh, edit it. I don't know. Or maybe it has to be my video, and then I can edit it. I'm just glad the whole thing went through. When I first opened it up, only like two hours was there, and I was like, "Oh shit!" The whole like first hour was totally gone, but it just had to like just long. takes time rendering. <laughs> it took shit. a long yeah. time. Yeah, I was just so glad you fucking took the helm there and fucking held on when things went cuckoo birds. That was fucking cool as fuck. Red I, I I knew you were gonna come back. I knew you weren't at least far. I was yeah. I was actually to as the point. As long as the call is like, live, you know what I mean. You're fine. Yeah, I was almost to the point where I was like. Is his, am I not even doing anything? But the, the chat was still live, so I was like, "All right, he's gonna I come back." I couldn't see anything. My screens were all blinking, and it was fucking going weird. It was red alert I, at I, Eagle's I, Nest. Did you not? I had my finger on the button, and I was getting ready to just kill it. And I heard Red just. It was almost like a mayday. I, I, I can hear it. But I'm like, and my hand backed off, and I'm like, "Well, I'm just gonna give it a second then." And I'm it took like a couple more I'm minutes of things acting crazy, but it fucking came back around. I'm like, hell yeah. I kept going, Ray, if you can hear me, thank you. Keep talking, brother. <laughs> hell yeah. Fellas, I'm going to bounce up out of here. I'm going to let you guys work towards that uh, record breaking score. Keep streaming. Right. Everybody in chat, it's been awesome. Thanks for letting me hang out and just talk shit. Yeah, rock and roll, Scobo. Later. Good night. Later. Man. Love you, brother. Mr. Red. Did you hey, still go out some smoke? hash? Is that what you're smoking on? Is that yeah, it? man. Yeah, I had this little less little chunk of hash that I pulled out from earlier. I didn't want to leave half a piece in here. So and then there is some of this other hash here from August. I kinda took out a nice big chunk and I got a lot of it stuck in my teeth right now, so I'm kinda trying to pick that out i've been munching on that but i haven't really gotten a chance to get it past the teeth yet <laughs> so trying on that but huge I might have thank to... you to fucking you sequence and fucking skillbo and all the guests and cab the chat fucking all these cool people that's tuned in this week for this fucking effort man it's been fucking so cool you know it's been really cool. I can't believe the people that, you know, have showed up and stuck it out. You know, our episode, we had constant people that were there for almost the whole episode. And we've had people here in this episode. That's, I know, uh, dude. It's awesome. It really is. Like, man, it was it, like almost midnight. And I was like, oh, shit. Eagle shows on. I popped in. I was like, oh, shit. Awesome. It's working it out. No. My herbs now was on and everything. I was like, "Cool, cool." He got his he got his guests to work out today, which is good. Oh yeah, I think I've got it done. Well, tomorrow I don't know how tomorrow's guest is. That's so much more of a. Well, I guess it should be about as close as. Uh, I don't know how Zoomy uh, experience they are. 
but uh, I got a few good guests this week. Uh, left, uh, I have uh, tomorrow is uh, sonsanddaughters.org, the fuck cancer people here in Michigan. We'll oh, right be on. talking cool. shit with each other. And then uh, Friday, I had a double scheduling conflict. I reached out to a couple of folks, and uh, one said yes, and I, I don't know if I offended him, and if I did, I'm going to say it right now. The American one, I'm sorry if I, uh, I handled it or <clears throat> whatever in the way. I kind of I put it out there with uh, – I threw it out. Uh, one was a little bit – you know, they were offset a little bit. So when I kind of got both yeses, they were both offset. One answered quicker than the other is what happened. The earlier invitation hesitated and answered late. And I uh, was starting to panic about Friday. I'm like, oh, I got to get somebody. And then I, I have asked the American one several times. And he said, yeah, sure, I'll be in Friday. No problem. You know? And uh, then as soon as, no sooner I took that text, I went back to my DMs and uh, T-Dog, the artist, who will be on Friday, uh, had okayed. He was the first one. So I had to go back to the American one and said, can I, can I please reschedule you for a, a new night? So that's uh, sonsanddaughters.org tomorrow. And then T-Dog, the artist, Friday. And then we have Liam Mass uh, will be coming on. I don't know if you know who Liam Mass is, but uh, long time we nerd community uh, supporter. I mean, most times if you're following Liam or one of his uh, alias accounts, he has a few, uh, you can see him everywhere. You know, he's always there, uh, you know, positive vibes, supporting everybody's garden and things they're doing. And I've met him more than a few times. A great guy. I want to show him some love. So he'll be on Saturday. And uh, we got some cool guests coming on next week. Spartan, Spartan Grown 420, the name one, will be on Monday night here to talk about us. Not to sit here and just you know, plug some shit, but uh, that's dude, what's dude. coming up for the next few days. Yeah, dude. I'm hoping I can just keep it all steamrolling. You know, I've got a lot of irons out, a lot of olive branches, and uh, people have been more than responsive. I can't even. I'm honored. I'm, I'm. I'm really honored. Some of the people I've asked, and the, 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 you know, I'm honored. I really am. As well as everybody here, anybody that's taken part of this. You know, I don't want to say I'm more honored than one than the other. The whole experience and everybody that's helped out and came on has been, it's very, it's been an honor to deal with everybody. You know, you especially, because, you know, I've been kind of long in this kind of one-on-one -on -one time. We've been doing the two-hour thing on Sundays, but this, this extra time with you has been really cool getting it, to know you on a whole nother level. Uh, yeah man it, it really is it's been it's been fun dude I, I i dig the direction that your show's going i commend you for doing a show every damn night man i think that's awesome it's <laughs> really cool dude you yeah, know be a guest Very i've happy. been thinking about it too and i'm like you know that's quite it is you know three you know every night that's quite the commitment you know I mean, I know and, uh, not a lot of us have much going on right now, so it's not a bad time to get it rolling, you know? Well, I can, the thing about it is this is fits in my schedule anyway. So even if things were normal, I could still pull this off. It's just a commitment, and I'm ready to make it. You know what I mean? I even thought about it get, today. I'm like, I'm going to do it fucking 365. As much as I can do it, Lil. I might it might even be a thing to where if I have to and I have to travel, I may end up just traveling with a hot spot, getting me a hot spot, which my phone is capable, you know, of the hot spot. So as long as I throw my laptop in the backpack and I've got my hot spot, if I'm traveling, I could all just pull over and talk shit for at least a half hour, even at a rest stop if I had to. You know, and get somebody in here. So, I'm gonna make That's that effort awesome. too. So, well, what even if you didn't have anything going on, you just kind of threw up a, 
testing and whatever and just to talk in the chat and stuff i mean even that's pretty sweet just to jump on and talk yeah. to chat i think it's pretty cool too i like watching people go to li- go live i watch people go live and they don't have any guests on or anything you know i watch a couple different there's like uh i think uh i can't pull anybody's names off the top of my head but like uh steven from nature's always right i think is one of them and he just talks about vegetable gardening you know he just goes live and talks vegetable gardening talks to people in chat a couple like guitar tutors and stuff like that just talk to chat man i think it's fun it's pretty cool i'll see some i'll see one like of I, people I follow is live and just jump on it this is the way i feel about that uh Ryan, is you know i'm not afraid to i've never been afraid to uh stumble and fall they're always learning and you know stumbling and fall and if uh i'm doing it publicly well then learn from that with me as i go through my journey and uh a lot of these and thank you for supporting me through it you know i said in the beginning there's going to be some trials and there's going to be some errors you know it, it's all, next going to be next to impossible to line up guess 365 you know what I'm saying? So there's going to be a lot of nights where there's a possibility of me just sitting here fucking listening to some music, fucking off, maybe trimming or whatever. And if they want to tune in for that, that's cool. If not, then they want to wait for another guest, then whatever. But I think to me, the important thing will be showing up and uh, at least coming on and saying hello. Yeah, man. I mean... Make that- I trim enough. Never know. I might just have to sit around the trim, virtually sit around the trim table with you one of these nights, which doesn't sound like a bad idea either. Hell yeah. I didn't, you know, who cares if the camera, you know, I don't see your hands anyway. So if you're sitting there playing Edward Scissorhands, I, I could give a shit. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know, I, I mean, should be trimming a as a matter time. of fact. I need to get oh, myself man. a nice little lap, lap uh, tray or something. Look, man, you might whistle while you work, man. Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> It'd be like snip, That's snip, where snip, I snip. Yeah. You, you know, I don't. Time. I think people would mind that either if you did it. You know? Fuck yeah. No, no, part no. of the cannabis culture, part of uh, part of the life. You know. Absolutely, That's, it is. It's a familiar sound. That's I for think, sure. You know, I honestly think it would draw the the people in chat in a little bit more because now it's even a more private sesh even if more so if we were both sitting here just <laughs> you know be sitting in on the trip party man they sat there trying weed and fuck talk shit with us for fucking two hours you know That's even straight, at that dude. concept i think i would fucking tune in for that yeah i think there's... i would smoke and you know i think i would participate if i were on the other side i think i would watch and fucking smoke and hang out oh yeah man there's there's a good percentage of the viewers watching that are probably trimming or at least in the garden or doing something like that i would i hope so this is a long episode you gotta be do something besides (laughs) yeah right exactly exactly Eagle, I can't make it too long. Um, I'm probably going to have to bounce out of here, man. Uh, but we will roll another marathon episode, no problem, you know. Um, no worries. Yeah, man. <clears throat> no worries, man. I appreciate you popping in. I actually got some shit I got to do. So when you jump off, I'm probably just going to say my goodbyes and fucking thank, you know, whoever and – uh get to work myself i got some transplanting i gotta do i gotta mix up some cocoa gotta wash the pots i mean you know about that i like to wash everything in between you know it's the only way to keep things at bay (laughs) yeah yeah keep the pathogens out i use the i reuse my easy swap pots and they're like i they're little like half gallons that i start in and then from there, I go into my three gallons that I flower in. But in that little bit of time that they're in those pots, you know, they get pretty dirty and pretty nasty. So when I peel them open, they're kind of a mess, man. I got to knock the cocoa out and then I got to 
you know, bleach them and then spray them. And then there's usually some roots and stuff still. And I just leave the roots and shit in there. I don't even bother. I don't bleach them. I never bleach my uh, vinegar is a more, again, I, I love the vinegar versus bleach. But what uh, kind of vinegar, ratio do you use when you use vinegar? Well, you can use it to one cup per five gallons is affected enough to kill mold and mildews. Although okay. I use uh, probably twice that, to be honest with you. Okay. It's not bleach. It's not going to, you know, break down the pot or anything. No, I mean, so, that's, and that's affordable. I mean, you're going to get around here. Home. I use it full stream. A gallon. I dump it straight in the bottle. I don't even cut it right in half. If you buy the uh, cleaning, there's a cleaning version. Okay. It, uh, some, in some cases, it's cheaper. In some cases, it's a dollar more. But it doesn't have that vinegar smell, and it has 1% more acidity to it. Okay. So it's All a right. little better yet for cleaning. But, man, it, it's an excellent cleaner. And for your pots, it's a, you know, bleach is one of them things. If you don't wash it out, wash when you wash with bleach in a planter environment like we are, if you don't wash it again, it stays around in a film that kind of promotes uh, molds and mildews. So, and vinegar doesn't do that. It might leave your pot a tiny bit acidic, but it won't. Uh, it won't leave it in a bleachy a bleachy film throughout the fabric. Yeah, I've I've definitely messed with like off-brand bleaches or like low. I don't know, not not like pure what is it something hydrochloride or something whatever the hell bleach is 100 hydrochloride or whatever it is you make a healthier cleaner like a cleaner version of bleach but yeah it's the stuff i get from home depot that's just um home depot's outdoor not the outdoor cleaner yeah i think it's out no not outdoor cleaner there's a bleach cleaner but then there's like a bleach it's like 99 percent actually bleach I mean, that shit is actually good shit and i'll i'll clean with that i won't get any uh residue with that but i i know exactly what you're talking about because that shit we cleaned all of our groceries with some off-brand bleach and all of our groceries had a fucking smudge all over it we're just trying to be careful right now but i'm gonna uh clean all my fruits and vegetables i need to pick up a bunch of white vinegar and anyways what's your thoughts cleaning. on like an oxy clean product for like your pot i thought about that at one time but I, I've often just used dish soap, um, like when That's I was using like plastic pots and stuff. It? What's that? Uh, basically, isn't well, I think oxy, oxy clean is like like a, peroxide like a dry peroxide type thing? I think so. It seems like that's exactly what it would be. I'm no chemist, but something like that, I'd imagine. I'm pretty sure that's what it is, pretty close to that. I always just use dish soap. I, I've always just, like, hand scrubbed them with a... Uh, with like a whatever style brush I can get, you know, whatever one matches the size of the container and, and, or I would toss them through the dishwasher if I really needed to, but now I'm messing with fabric. So that's why I'm soaking and cleaning just a little bit of a different, different thing or man, power washing whenever it's like summertime, spray them off with the hose. It's and tough and messy and garden. chase them around. If I've actually chained them to like a two, one of the screw in dog post things. And then uh, threw the handle around there. But even at that, you're like in a circle chasing that bitch around. And you're eating some dirt with the power wash. Yeah, and... definitely. Yeah, you got to be on some concrete or something or else you're making a big old mess. I'm always making a mess. When I'm, I'm, I'm always like cleaning out my grass. I'm like, why am I cleaning out on the grass? I got this giant puddle of mud now. And now I got to get all my shit dirty, run through a puddle of mud. Actually, What's that? Oh shit! Did I? Did you just freeze up? Am I gonna run this solo again? Is that what's going on? That outside. Ah, you're back. You can hold to it and fucking just run in that bitch just for pops. Just fill it full of fucking cold water and just let it and just throw the holes out into the yard and fucking let whatever <laughs> dirt material fucking. You know what I'm saying? You can keep it. You can actually keep it in a shed or whatever. And dolly it out and just use it on pot wash and day out into the yard. Oh, yeah. Dolly that thing right back and that'd be the all I think that'd be pretty fucking good way to do it. I saw a good one was like a tire, a five gallon bucket in the middle of the tire, and then you could uh and then the tire would basically keep the five gallon bucket from flopping around and shit. So you could like use the tire to probably support maybe your seven to ten gallon pots or something if you wanted to, or 
or what this scenario was was they were putting the uh fabric bags over the five gallon bucket which my three gallon fabric bags wouldn't fit i think those were five gallon fabric bags put them over a five gallon bucket and sprayed the shit out of them with a power washer and the tire held the bucket in place so the bag didn't fly off or anything that was kind of interesting i can appreciate that because that's the way i used to handle uh air pods the big air pods and i have small okay. i have little tiny ones i have big ones i have you know all different sizes but they're a bitch to wash because of that you know tank tread i could so imagine trying running to running no rag or shit over that no way and uh if you roll them out if you undo them they're even a more of a bitch to wash so it's easier to just leave them bundled up and uh, so I tried them. I take them out in the yard, and chase them around with the power washer. Then I kind of got hip. I bought uh, like a long bristle from the auto parts place, a long bristle like car wash and brush. And then I just drag a tote out into the you know the yard and fill it full of vinegar water and uh, vinegar and water. And then I just brush them real good inside and out bottom of the grate and then dump that shit out which again that's a good thing to dump out over your concrete vinegar 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 uh if you dump that shit over like say you're in your back patio or whatever uh it's not gonna hurt your grass so what it will do is keep ants away and bugs and shit and it will clean up your concrete so you're washing your pots and you fucking just dump that go freely dump that shit around your concrete area and it will fucking a kill off weed weeds and it'll fucking deter ants so it's a kind of win 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 if you're washing them pots outside but it sure be chasing them around with a power washer because that's yeah up. man i think you sold me on the vinegar I think I'm going to uh, start stocking up on some of that because I was already planning on getting some vinegar to wash my fruits and veggies with because I, I normally don't mess with water. I, I rinse my fruits and veggies. You know, maybe I should be a little more diligent. I don't know, but I, I normally just stick the shit in the fridge with all this that's COVID-19 a, shit. I want to fucking scrub. That's a great point too. Vegetable. the veggies there. A light mix with vinegar and water for your veggies is a great uh, quick clean. Yeah, I like that a lot better because lately I've been washing all my apples, oranges, tomato, everything that I eat, I've been washing with soap and water. And I just, I don't like putting soap on my vegetables and shit. I don't know. It comes off, but I'd rather just yeah. use something a little more organic. I'm eating. It works for it, vinegar. It, it works for everything too. You can clean your glass. You can clean any kind of surface with it. You know what's up? You'll love this. And I, I fucking, this is a challenge for you, Red. You okay? This is another great use of fucking vinegar. Uh, you take it 100% and you put it in a bowl. And I guarantee you, you, I get, you take your rustiest fucking tool or anything. I use, I actually, the same bottle I clean with, if I'm doing my auto mechanics, it works great for a, a rust buster. Say you're working on something oh, and you ain't got no liquid wrench, spray that shit down with some vinegar. Let it sit for a few minutes and then come back and spray it again. And that shit will eat every bit of rust off. But what I'm talking about, you can even take like a, a crescent wrench that has completely crusted over that little nut and shit. You take that crescent wrench and you put that fucker in vinegar, 24 hours, you will be able to take a toothbrush and brush that down to the fucking shiny metal again. And you can actually work that ball back and forth and toothbrush it out. And that crescent wrench will be as shiny and clean and new as the day you fucking bought it. Get the fuck out of here, man. Yeah, I'm sold. No, I'm serious. Fucking try I'm it. I, I, I'm going to try it. Try yeah, it. I'm going to try it. it. I'm sold because it. vinegar is cheap. Rusty man. bolt or anything. That. Take the rustiest fucking thing you can find and don't just chuck it in a fucking make sure it's covered. And fucking come back 24 hours later, and you can either rub it with your fingers down to the bare shiny metal, or you can just take a fucking toothbrush back to fucking restored hammers, anything. Fucking you spray that shit on. If you can put it in there, players, brand new, brand fucking new. Just nice. give it a shot of grease and that, you know, the pivot point or whatever, throw it right back in your toolbox. I've done it. I've actually picked tools up. 
that's been outside for better than a year, unusable, throwing it in there for 24 hours and fucking clean that thing up and then just like the day I bought it. Well, you know, I, all my, like, when I take clones, I use fresh razor blades. I got a pack of brand new fresh razor blades. When I take clones, I use a fresh razor blade. It gets oxidized, it gets wet, and then it gets oxidized real fast. And it kind of, over time, that sucker will just be rusted out. I don't want to, like, I'll, I'll stash them off to the side because I don't like just throwing razor blades in my trash. What I'll do eventually is I'll take, like, a stack of old razor blades, and I'll bundle them up with some tin foil, and then I'll throw them away so that shit doesn't just end up in the street or something. But <clears throat> I will, uh, I, I've often thought, man, these aren't dull razor blades, like, I can reuse these razor blades. I can reuse them in my, my box cutter knife. I can use them, reuse them wherever, but they're all fucking rusted out by the time. Even if you didn't want to leave I'm it in. I'm going to soak the them in fucking vinegar. Yeah, wet paper towel, put it in there for a few hours. You could probably take that same paper towel and rub that fucking. Yeah, rust. I could probably reuse them for my clones too at that point. That's yeah. fucking awesome. I dude. think it'd be sterile. sterile. Yeah, because you're right back down to the, you know. If I'm back down to the metal, I'll just re hit it with back. alcohol or something and. Yeah. Men, mineral free metal. Why right. wouldn't it be quite clean? Yeah, yeah, it might not. Yeah, it probably wouldn't hurt to hit it with some alcohol. I hit it with some alcohol, I'm sure. It'd be good. But then again, that isn't like a, I could be rot. It's iron. You know what I mean? If it's rusted, it's turned into yeah an iron state. And yeah. plants, in fact, use iron. So I can't see it being too bad. Yeah, I think only magne magnesium, when it oxidizes, that goes white. I mean, the only other color oxidization is white, I think, from a metal, if I can think correctly about that. You said you were going to jump on. I got you for a fucking whole nother fucking 20 minutes and shit. I know, dude. I know. I was like, I'm out of here, man. I'm going to sit here and talk about vinegar for 20 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Yeah, I'll let you get going, fucking. Yeah, you know? I'm gonna bounce out of here, Eagle, but it was a fucking awesome, awesome shit talking with you. I'll tell you uh, that. You yeah. too. I'm glad I jumped on. I was just kicking it, watch man, I was laying with the pup. I'm I was almost falling asleep and I was like, fuck around watching YouTube. Miss Red had just passed out and I was like you guys said jump on and I was like, you know what? I'm gonna go. I had just gotten done, uh I might as well shout out the Frugal Force real quick on uh Saturday night. Uh the episode that we just recorded i think well, i'm not sure if they're backed up on episodes or not so i don't want to say it's going to be this saturday but shout out to the fugal force on saturday nights shout out to michigan bros grow show on sundays and uh shout out to uh my homie who's in charge of new standard uh i'm going to be the voice box uh i'm going to be the voice prompt person when you give new standard uh a, a call their provisioning center in hazel park um 10 mile and john r so when you give them a call to make orders you're going to hear me talking giving you a voice prompts on which number to push when you want to talk to somebody so that's that's a real cool opportunity i get to do with those guys i'm really excited uh so really excited about them opening i think that they're supposed to open this friday as a matter of fact um if everything goes well which would be really cool they'll be doing curbside pickup so shout out to those guys and just shout out to everybody tuning in. Shout out to everybody who does tune in in the future, man. Shout out to your show, dude. I love it, bro. Uh, Thank you. I appreciate you letting me jump on and ramble along with you guys tonight. So thanks. You know, I told you uh, anybody from the Michigan bro show. And if you see me sitting here and there ain't a guest there and you see me struggle a little bit, hit me with a DM be like, give me them numbers, dude. You're always welcome to pop in and talk shit with me. You know, I'm glad so Jack jumped in last night because I felt a little bad. I was like, man, I can't jump in right now. I was, I was kicking it with Miss Red, and we were hanging out, and, um, you know, we just had some other stuff going on. I had to get in the garden and do some things. So, you know, I'm, I'm that's real sweet that Jack did that, and it gives me a good chance oh, yeah, to get someone to listen wait. to. They, they, they actually, I was thinking about bailing at several points, and chat was like, no, fucking keep it going. We're cool with it. This is fine with us. This And it kept going. It actually went for, uh, I think, like an hour and a half, maybe an hour and 45 minutes uh, before Jack jumped in. And chat was popping, and it was actually, a, you know, for a solo effort and things uh, going south in the beginning. 
And that was the second effort with Phoenix Farms too. They kind of sucked. yeah, it kind of fast forwarded it through the episode. It was a little ways in. I was like, man, that's that's awesome. You you hung out and stuck with chat for a while until Jack came in. And, and I don't mind. I hope that's exactly what people do. I know these are some long episodes and it's a lot of take in, you know. But I you know I encourage people to you know. You know, until you find something that you know hits you and shit, that's cool with me. I appreciate you stopping in nonetheless, even if it's five minutes, three hours, whatever. You know, I appreciate whatever. I appreciate it. I Believe appreciate it or not, it. man, it was only going to be for five minutes. I was like, I'm going to pop in and say hi, smoke one, and dip, you know, and nah, I decided to hang out. And I started, I wasn't. You know, I wasn't feeling right when I popped in. I was, I wasn't breathing right, and this Death Star man just helped me. Well, you know, the the combination of the Death Star and us, ta- uh, just kicking it and chilling was, you know, good combination altogether because it's a it's a thinking I don't anxiety. Think you know? I don't think people realize that either. I mean, I there's a lot of Sundays before this effort to where. I'm not ashamed to admit I was stressed the fuck out <laughs> up until I hit the camera on and things got going on the show and then the, yeah. the flow of it all kind of released it all and let me talk a little bit. But there's a lot of, you can see a lot of the episodes where in that first hour I'm just kind of, you know, sitting there smoking. And then in the second half, I'm all of a sudden like something went off and I'm all talkative. That's because I, <laughs> I had that wind down. I smoked and everybody made me feel comfortable. But it's not easy to, uh, especially live, to flip this thing on and just sit here and go, uh, 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 please watch me. I'm a stuttering idiot smoking a fucking joint. Uh it's not easy and it can be in itself a panic attack uh, yeah man that's that's definitely why i want to shout out everybody in chat everybody that likes to hang out and kick it with these live shows and stuff man it's fun i've been i've been doing it for a long time hanging out in chats and i jump in all kinds of different chats i'm i'm in random stuff but i don't know if it shows up on what kind of things i follow on my my I, i probably follow most uh cannabis related stuff on my channel just to kind of keep it smooth but there's a couple random off-grid style growing and off-grid living and stuff things that i like to follow i'm usually in, those guys go live i'm in those chats chat saying what's up just the same you know i love it man it's a fun community anyway ego i'm gonna start going down another rabbit hole dude if i don't jump off of here man so right peace out man thank you very much for having me dude i really appreciate you man and your show Thank you, man. Feel free to pop in. Have a great tomorrow. I know I'll probably I'll give you a great good morning in the morning, but uh, Absolutely, man. make sure and you have a fucking great day. And, you know, tell you Mr. Too, Brad brother. again for lending you to us and uh, have a good day to her as well. I will, man. Thank you very much. Thank you for your blessings and thank you, chat. Peace out, cannabis community. Thanks, guys. Later on. Have a good day. Red Setter Farms, everybody. So glad he was able to uh, tune in and uh, pop in with us as long as well as Skillbo One, Skillbo Seventeen on YouTube. Uh, always a pleasure speaking with them, as well as Scott from Herbs Now. Great guy, supporter of the show. I can't thank him enough for all the wonderful things he does. And uh, he is a cannabis warrior for sure. He is definitely living. And I uh, hope to hear from him again as well. Thank you to all the people that tuned in tonight and that will tune in in the future. Too many of you guys to uh, lay into. Uh, there's a couple right here that I'm looking at. I just want to say right quick. Drop shot one. You've been a warrior tonight, stuck in for a long, long time. UF or UK, uh, uh, damn cat mouth, UK SIF 420. I am so sorry for that stumble, brother. Uh, John Boy, it's just so, so many. Let's fuck it. We got it's my show. I got some minutes. We'll just spin through to John Boy, Elliot. Thank you. Jack Screens Talk. 
man, cannabis badass. I love you. I hope you come back on soon. Who else stopped in here tonight? Of course, my daughter Lexi popped in to tell her dad she loved me. Trey, thank you. Who else we got here? Um, um, I'm doing the magic mirror thing as Skillbo would say. Skillbo, thank you. Red Setter Farms, thank you. CJ, thank you so much. You are a trooper. You're always here as well. Drop shot nutrient shout outs. Nikki, thank you. Tara, Jill, all you guys, if I'm missing anybody. Sequence three, I can't miss that motherfucker. I love that dude. He's cool, son of a bitch. Anyways, I don't want to go through this whole chat. If I miss you, I am so sorry. I hope to get you next time. I am Eagle Gardens, Eagle Gardens one on Instagram. Please check me out tomorrow. The guest will be sonsanddaughters.org. The fucking cancer people here in Michigan. Hope you guys tune in. I appreciate you guys. Please have a good night. Do something nice for somebody.